Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! Woke, woke. Yeah, it looks like Chuck's taking the skin boat to Tuna Town. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. That was the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, that was the wrong button. <laughs> how about how about this one? The following program is rated TV-M-A-L. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. I haven't clapped that hard since I watched the Acolyte trailer. Oh my god! <laughs> Lightsaber! <laughs> like, I was like, wait, don't clap for that. Yeah, Soka's not done yet. You got clapping to do in the finale. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seal of approval! <laughs> Anakin might show up again. You don't know. It's yellow. Instead of it's I mean, red, it's yellow. I feel like it's red is, is is the more important, you know, reaction. She wouldn't pull that out for just a yellow, but for red, yes. Yes, you're right. So I wonder if any of them will Vader. I hope they Vader. God, I, please Vader. I hope we get one more Vader tonight. <laughs> I hope we get a yeah. Luke, too. I hope they Jake. Dude, legit, in, um, in episode seven, uh, I think at the beginning of it, and I was like recording, I, I, was, I was just like, what do, you, what do you think the odds are on Anakin showing up again? And I think everybody was like, nah, nah, they won't do it again. They already pulled that one. <laughs> the fucking one of the first scenes he's there again. We're like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And he just gives her all the usual, like, the force is all around you. You should always, be, be, be. You should always make sure you be. Make sure you remain a woman. And not a man, and the force uh, will be strong with you oh, with Disney. Yeah. Yes. Hey, welcome. Where are you going with that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Disney, so it's how you identify. Bagging, boarding, and chatting. That's what it, it, this is. This, 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 this is. It's the real BBC. It's early. An early nooner. An er well, I mean. You can really have a nooner at any time of the day, X-ray girl, you know, because a nooner That's essentially a, what a nooner is. This isn't the nooner show, but what a nooner is, is when you're on your lunch break at work and maybe you live close enough at home or maybe your wife visits you in the parking lot or, you know, 
Maybe you just go in the bathroom. I, it's a nooner. Oh, wow. It all counts. The warehouse, you know, the bushes behind the behind the parks I department. I for a pound. <laughs> I'll make sure I take my wife oh. out to the bushes. Uh, I bought this for a pound. Uh, oh, wow. The chat's going to get really excited. X-ray girl. <laughs> hey, um, I, I, that's the only time people might take their eyes off comics in this entire show. Uh, what did you bite off the rack? <laughs> oh, did you say rack? I did. <laughs> I, 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 got, I, ended up, I bought this as a, as a lot of 20 comics for 20 pounds. Oh, that's awesome. And... Uh, it's it's worth about one thousand one hundred dollars. It is. I mean, in mint. No, 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 no. In five point five, it's worth one point one grand. I'm not getting cheaper than that. Mint, it's worth uh, about twenty two grand. Oh, pfft. maybe you guys can explain to a layman. But what's the obsession with mints in the comic industry? What's that about? Oh, they like the taste. Uh... Yeah, mints. Uh, I are you, are you talking about like? Mint. Are you talking about like nine point eight CG seed? Yeah, nine point eight yeah, CG seed would go I, for about twenty two and a half. So I can get that comic book for three hundred bucks. Uh, fine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get this CG seed. There's a you there know you there's go. it's in good nick, but there's some blemishes. I, I'm pretty sure that's a little bit of staining there. Mm. Mm. Uh, yes. and this little, mm. little terrible. Little, what are people doing of, with comics these days? Well, it looks like a coffee-stained woman unless somebody's bled on it. <laughs> if it's blood, it's okay. If it's a coffee-stained... No, forget oh, it. Geez. Yeah. I cut myself open in the pages. Uh, minty fresh. Uh, yeah. There's a stamp on it. We've so got, I, reckon, I reckon about we, a five. Five we've, now. We've got a lot of... Hey, let me see. Is the stamp still in it? I, I'll I'll be the judge of that. Let me see that spine. Five, let me see the spine. Half. No, it's not a five. With that stain. It's not. Not with the stain. Fine seems okay, but that stain will bring it way down. Sorry. Sorry, pal. Sorry. Ass. No, it's a 9.5. I what, what am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> you went to that other place, didn't you? Sorry, I went to yeah. Some that guy trying place to place that <laughs> buys their own stock and then sells it on their own site and goes, Oh my god, this is what the fortune now. <laughs> yes. You're talking about that site, aren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. All part of like Harris auctions and shit, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's all. They're all in on it. They're all in on it. Be, they're careful. buying their own fucking things and then they're inflating them by buy buy what you're them. willing to pay for and really take the time to just go to cons and essentially buy stuff. Uh, buy it raw. I know people are like buy the oh. CGC. No, buy it raw. Buy the meat raw. Buy it raw. You'll you'll save the so much money. And buy it raw. Yeah, buy. Mm. The, give me the meat. Give it. Do I still have that? G give me the comic and give it to me raw. Oof. Oh my god, I have so many I'm gonna sound bites comics. now. <laughs> There's too many buttons. Give me the meat and give it to me raw. Five minutes later. Dude, it's gonna be crazy seeing those wonderful characters return in season two. Oh my god. <laughs> I, okay, what's so funny about Rings of Power Season 2 is I'm not sure if they're finished yet. I know they forged ahead without their showrunners. <laughs> they they made the season without their... And we haven't heard anything... Will that improve it, though? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, won't that, won't that make it better? It might. R -r 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 -r. In, the, in the meantime, uh, House of the Dragon finished up with everybody. Everybody working because mm -hmm. they, uh, they were under the UK rules. And uh, it's now going to be... It was be, already written as well. It was already written, and it's going to come out earlier. It's going to be like mid next year, so we aren't oh, going to have to wait till fall. Be fun, fun on the. Oh, I cannot wait! I cannot wait! Oh, and the first episode! Oh, we found out what the name of the first episode is, and I'm just going to say David. No, no. <laughs> oh, it's worse than that. I could get why you'd be so excited for that, though. As <laughs> yes. Uh, nice. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the show. We're gonna get we we uh, Ahsoka ends tonight. I I know, I know. Oh, that's sad. That's sad, sad. So sad. And then we get right into Loki, season oh, two, which apparently they released four episodes to uh, shills like Chris Gore, and Yay. um he can't talk about it. But uh, I guess he's free to talk about it tomorrow. Uh, but mm. uh, 
the people have already done reviews, and it's four of six episodes, by the way. <sighs> it's six episodes. Hey, it's only six. <laughs> and apparently it's pointless and boring. I'm shocked. I'm starting to wonder if these guys, if they knew like what TV used to be. It's like it's like the effort and work they put into those six. It's like you understand this is this is like a quarter of a season from back when TV yeah. had like you know had to entertain half six seven. episodes. And yeah, and mm. you know nothing. Yeah, nothing's gonna happen. That's like the meme of of all of these fucking shows. Because it's funny you say the Ahsoka's ad dig. It's like finally Thrawn will make it back. To the Star Wars universe, that'll be the end of this, right? In, in the last five minutes of this yeah. episode, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> when you could have just fucking opened the season with that, to be honest with you. Uh, the last scene will be him uh hyper driving back, yeah. and they'll be like, Well, at least we destroyed at least we're together. everything to yeah, at least we're together at and we're together. Just says, let's smoke some space weed. So I got the uh, first printing on uh, that side, and I uh, actually bagged the second printing great. on the other side. Uh, hi, Az. How's it going? Hello. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, my old macker. How are you doing? Doing good. That's great. Doing good. That's Wonderful. awesome. Awesome. Mahler, how are you doing? <laughs> Fabulously. I've uh, I've just been nonstop editing, trying to catch up on Ahsoka. It's been insane because uh, mm -hmm. I got delayed by, obviously, the video coming out and then just other things. The Swark, we've been setting that up, but... Um, Finally, today we're getting five and six out at the same time, and seven and eight will be the end of the week because the whole season will be the release. How exciting is that? And in between, I just relaxing by playing some more Lies of Penis. So. Lies of Penis. Uh, as look at this cover. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, Holy oh, shit. They're my ancestors. <laughs> How did the, the. Did he like. Fly through the floor and oi. <laughs> just... Tunnel tunnel through, tunnel uh... through Earth and came out <laughs> in China. <laughs> yeah. This is this is in the scriptures, okay? I swear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chosen one has arrived. <laughs> I gotta put it in a magazine uh bag for now because I don't I have like a cover. I don't mm. have a golden age bag. Um I also got like a real 2000 AD. Darling. I got a 2000 AD when I was in the UK. Nice. Yeah. I got a. I brought all my comic boxes back home from storage. I thought you were I just brought... going to bring a few. I was, right? I was just going to bring the Batman and Detective. And then uh, I realized that there <laughs> was you'd... some Detective and Batman missing, which meant they were in other boxes. So I went back and I. Had a look and I brought back some more boxes. <laughs> and then I thought, well, there's not, not a all? lot of boxes left in storage now. So I did want to bring the collection back. So uh let's just bring them all back. So I got oh all my, my all my boxes are back, oh. which is uh 23. My god. It's a nice little bit right there. 23 mid boxes. I know I'm, I did I didn't own a comic book shop. If you know somebody that did Gary, they have probably got a lot more. Um, mm, yeah, I had more for the comic shop. It, long boxes are not the mid box. Yeah, I yeah, I don't do long boxes anymore. Wow. Does it get too heavy? Yeah, they're they're lame, especially with the newer books. I mean, with the older books it's fine, but with newer books, they can weigh up to like 65, 70 pounds. Oh my Oof. god. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. Yeah, so uh, you know, with long comes heavy. With long comes that's heavy. That's true. Speaking of long, long man. hello, long man. Did you I say hello to you already? You've already said hello. It. Hello. <laughs> hello again, dude. It's what happens when you do a lot of drugs. Uh, I mean, a long time ago, uh, they have repercussions. Hello, in a galaxy far, people? far away. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have found out that a show that you've seen, Gary, is coming to uh, mm. Toronto. The Empire Strips Back. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Tickets go on sale tomorrow, so I'm excited. And I've already told uh, the fellow Torontonians in the area that um, they'll be here. So I think... I think they're gonna go too so we'll see we'll see yeah you uh you have to go it is uh well i mean mark has to go it's really good 
<laughs> Mark has to go. You don't have to go, but Mark has to no, go. No, I think there's like a dude part. I think Han Solo does a dude oh, part. Oh, okay. I kind of phased out for that part, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then yeah, you still remembered it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. That's why. That's why I started checking my phone. So. Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, uh, Ian so forth. He's uh, in the chat a lot. Just said. Um, just make sure you don't sit next to anyone having a Han Solo. Oh, oh. A, Han, a Han Solo. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Ian, for that. But yeah, we're gonna go. And if there's anyone out there in that area, you should go too, because I'm. I've heard such great things from Gary and Chris Gore. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 a fun show. It's the best Star Wars I've I've seen since uh, George Lucas sold it. <laughs> the best be new Star Wars. <laughs> uh, the best part is when Princess Leia strips in front of R two D two and he spits out. Well, you know, it's like uh, you know she's putting the message into R two D two, and and no, he spits out a bunch of dollar bills. He's all. <laughs> <laughs> good boy, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Wow, I, I wish Mark's leg did that for me. Just put a little. <laughs> well, you would just take well, dollar bills at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I just shamed you, Mark. Wow. Oh, my goodness. You see how I am? You see how I am? Yeah. So, X-Ray Terrible. can just admit it. Never mind. Forget it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what do we want to talk about first? I guess uh, the Acolyte trailer. <laughs> It's leaked everywhere. I'm surprised they don't just release it at this point because I guess it leaked. I guess it leaked a few months ago, and I just didn't care. Uh, and uh, <laughs> no, in I, all fairness, Gary, nobody cared. Nobody cared. It's very difficult to care. So nobody cared, me. and I still don't care. And but it like I, I was able to get a copy of it. I was able to get a copy of it and watch it. And we showed everybody on Friday night. It's Mahler just saw it. Yeah, X-ray girl just saw it. So, uh, as uh, what are, are you like this time is Star Wars saved? Is it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna press X to doubt on that one. Mm, yeah, uh, I tell you what, though, the uh, the galaxy far, far away is exceedingly diverse. But do you know what they've got a huge abundance of apart from diversity? What lightsaber. Oh my God! There's so many lightsabers. You know what they don't have a lot of though is men. No. <laughs> Where did the men go? Seems to be distinctly lacking men, and men of a very specific color as well. Uh, a little bit like my color. <laughs> it, it it looked like a show made by a <laughs> former Harvey Weinstein assistant, uh, Leslie Headland, as an apology. It's lesbians in space, Gary. As an apology for all the women she led to slaughter as an assistant for Harvey Weinstein. Dude, the After... way that she was bumping up to the main star of the show, uh, I think she's trying to maybe emulate her former employee. Uh, well, no, because uh, here, okay, I'm going to get the article. Uh, when, is the, when is Acolyte set, by the way? I feel like I know nothing about it. 200 um, years before yeah. prequels? Yeah. A few hundred years ago. Mm. At least they can't destroy anything, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> te technically, I don't know if he will appear, but technically Yoda is alive and well. How is Yoda oh, alive and well when it's... Well, no, he's okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah sorry. He's an old boy. I did the math. Mm. He, he's alive and well. Yes, I, apparently Yoda's going to believe... Uh, here we go, X-ray girl. If you could pull up that article from Bounty, please. <laughs> Where they talk mm -hmm. about power. Oh. It's not about right or this is a line at chat. This is an actual verbatim line from it. It's yeah, it's it isn't about good or bad. It's about power and who's allowed to use it. I nearly fucking died when I saw isn't, that. Isn't Heard the point that. of that though, like still good or bad? Like who's allowed to use it? You want the good people to use it, not the bad people, right? Or no, well, shades, shades of gray. I think that's to what use they an mean. Example. Did okay, you no, hear what the wait. judge of the Trump trial said? Oh God, what? In a galaxy said, far, far if, away. The galaxy. No, he, far, he, <laughs> said, he said, if the jury get it wrong, 
then I'm prepared to override their decision. Oh. So what's the point of having a trial then? Exactly! <laughs> what's the point of the <laughs> it's called a charade, X-Ray Go. Oh, God. Which would get probably overturned on appeal almost immediately, but... Yes, but it's still... It's the, it's let's the go through the show oh, because no. the state rules all. All right, so yeah, uh, I think... Mahler, you're smart, so you recognize, you? I know, I'm sorry, uh, that this still kind of means good and bad, but I think what they meant to say was it's shades of gray, right? Uh, so when uh. Bounding tweeted this, I responded on Twitter with, well, to be fair, former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hedlund would know a little <laughs> bit about py- power dynamics. Okay, Oof. She would. Ouch. She learned from somebody Oof. who knew a lot about power dynamics. Oof. Uh, Leaked, the Acolyte trailer declares, this isn't about good or bad. It's about me being a lesbian. It's about power and Uh, who's allowed to use it. Well, I mean, there is articles out there where she's like, it's going to reflect her queerness and gender and queerness. queerness," Because she is a self-obsessed narcissist. I mean, somebody works in Hollywood, to be honest with you. I know. Um, Because that's what we go to Star Wars for is we want to learn about a former Harvey Weinstein assistant's lesbianess. Mm. Lesbianist. I mean... Mm. I, do you <laughs> Let's think, be honest here. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, they repeat the headline. Stop doing that, John. Uh, the trailer was recently uploaded to a Star Wars subreddit, and it's now gone. Uh, as you can see above, <laughs> which you can't... Uh, th- listen... Um, uh, I used this joke yesterday on Midnight's Edge, but I don't care. Uh, there might be some new people here. Google diversity image or or, or diversity um, stock photo. Diversity stock photo. That's what this show looks like with Carrie Ann Moss. Oh, yeah. Uh, as you can see above. Yeah, just put lightsabers in the hands. And then put lightsabers in everybody's <laughs> hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see above, it features a Jedi master teaching a number of younglings about the Force, telling them, your eyes can deceive you. You must not trust them. The Force is powerful. It is power we must respect. The explanation is a bizarre, given how Yoda, who is still alive and seemingly a prominent figure in the Jedi Order at the time uh, the show is supposed to take place, had a different view of the Force uh, as he relayed... T- to Luke Skywalker and the Empire Strikes Back. Well, that there's an explanation for that. Uh, author of this article, I can't assume it's John. It might. Oh, it's John. Um, which he might mention to give him credit. Uh, this is uh, a show written by former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hedlund. When asked uh, what was her favorite Star Wars, she said all the Star Wars. Oh, all the Star Wars. All the Star Wars. Well, didn't she, she say Star Wars? All the. I mean, all the. She says Star Wars. Star Wars, all the Star Wars, something yeah. to that effect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, like all the Star Wars and stuff. Uh, if you recall, Yoda told Luke. Gary, my... quick, 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 quick. Do you think Leslie Helen could have actually named one fucking film? No. <laughs> or she, no, or she, you guys apart know. Apart from Star Wars. Do you guys know that Ahsoka Episode 5 is still higher rated than Empire on IMDb? You mean the site that deleted negative reviews of the Rings of Power? There is no you mean, site. That you mean the site that's anymore. owned by Amazon, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's clear. Well, that's correct then, because episode five of Soak was clearly much better than the Empire. Something of an excellent <laughs> bit Dude. of uh, media. That's- <laughs> Freaking retarded. Uh, she tarted. It's she tarted. It's sharded. <laughs> it's a bunch of shitty it's. That was one of my favorite. Oh, Leahy. From One Piece. That was great. Oh. Shitty it's. That uh, comes from Trailer Park Boys, dude. That comes from Leahy. I know. But I liked it in One Piece. Uh, if you recall, okay. Uh, dude, I can't, well, I can't, I can't tell you the joke, but that. There's a reason I'm st- I'm gonna do another Ahsoka video because I have the best joke. 
then I'm just gonna run it to the ground <laughs> in it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's the only reason I'm making it. I oh, we'll talk about it later. I, I had a rough day yesterday. Uh, if you recall, Yoda told Luke, "For my ally is the Force, and a powerful ally it is. Life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds. Luminous beings, we are we, not this crude matter." You must feel the force around you, here, between you, me, the tree, the rock, everywhere. Yes, even between the land and the ship. Clearly, Loda, 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 Loda. Yoda, <laughs> Yoda <laughs> viewed the force as an ally and seemingly something he put his complete trust in, which is that which this Jedi master appears to be instructing his students to avoid doing. Well, maybe that's why Palpatine took over. We're finding out through Disney Star Wars that uh, the Jedi were retarded. They were dumb. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really, 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 dumb. and the and the Republic as well. So you got the retards well, leading yeah. the retards. I was about to say they will deliberately try and make certain people seem stupid, and then they will write their smart characters stupid because they don't know how to yeah. write smart characters. So it's just, everybody's retarded. It's great. Yeah. yeah, the New Republic is an incompetent matriarchy. Oh, it's. <clears throat> It's outright becoming to the point, like, I don't know if they want to write them antagonistically, right? Because, like, the in Ahsoka, our plucky heroes have to, you know, navigate the shittiness of the Republic. And it's like, guys, I thought we were supposed to like the Republic right now. Yeah. And then, of course, Mando Season 3 had uh, criticisms of the Republic as well. And it's just like, did we did we just lose at the end of <laughs> Return of the Jedi? Did we just... Did everything just get fucked? It feels like they yeah, just... Yeah, yeah that, like... It was it was just a battle that they won, but they might have lost the overall war. Well, they did, they did. Can I can I go with a hot take? Oh no! No, of course you that, that I've just thought of. Oh boy! Do you think do, do you think it's got anything to do with Republic is very close to Republican? <laughs> oh, you know, and the, and that and therefore they must show the Republic as stupid because I mean it's. It's still there. They've got a bunch of their OCs in that governmental position, like that fucking Carson guy or Mon Mothma. Yeah, yeah, Mon Mothma. Yeah, yeah. Represent in a positive way. So I, I think it's just incompetence because the fact is, like, they want us to think the Republic are good guys. You know, Leia comes through in the end. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you guys agree, but I thought that was some of the most blatant corruption in that government ever. Someone. Yes. Uh, betrays orders, gets a whole bunch of people killed, and then a higher up just says, "Nah, it's fine." Don't worry about it. Uh, I like also, you. Also, um, which planet is Leia the senator of? Um, well, because uh, the last time I checked, Alderaan was a fucking pile of rocks. The dust of <laughs> yes, she's yes, she's the, dust the of senator Alderaan. of a pile of dust. Is yes. that not... <laughs> okay, it's symbolic at this point. <laughs> well, you know. If she's a senator, she's bound. By, I mean, I don't as, know if she's a senator, as, but you're thinking too much again. I am thinking Disney too much Wars. because the last time I checked, she was Princess Leia Organa, but she wasn't Senator Organa. You know, sometimes I wonder um, if they're setting up the sequel trilogy, and it's like, oh wait, did she pull too many strings and use corruption too much, and then she got booed out of the fucking Republic and joined the Resistance? Is that what happened? <laughs> like they or, set or it up? No, Leia will set up the resistance due to the incompetence of the Republican Party. I mean, she's already fucking up herself. She she got uh, Hera off the hook when Hera should probably be serving fucking jail time. Mola, didn't we just, just all agree that when everyone's retarded, nobody's smart? <laughs> Nobody is. Nobody it's so is. funny, dude. Mon Mothma is like one of the most powerful and important figures in that Senate hearing or whatever <sighs> it is, and she just casually admits, like to the to her after it, like, "Oh, by the way, that was perjury." Huh? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? Wow. You, you know, uh, and we'll get into it more, but Balin has so many like meta lines about Disney taking over Star Wars. Yeah, it's so like good. The idea of it, the old, uh, like, There's so yeah, many good yeah. clips from my video. I like the dude. idea of it, but no, in and, practice, and one, the truth. one must destroy in order to create. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, as the trailer continues, some kind of assassin figures attack what appears to be a female Jedi in a bar. Uh, similar to how Ezra Bridger did 
did not use his lightsaber in the most recent episode of Ahsoka. This female Jedi does not use Jedi does not use her lightsaber, but uses a number of martial arts techniques and the Force to fend off the female assassin. The trailer then features a montage of scenes of Jedi marching through a town. The Master is instructing the younglings, and a Jedi appears to be interacting with the Trade Federation officials because they were so popular. I mean, like oh, if you're bringing God. in the Trade Federation officials as a member, Barry. <laughs> Fucked. You mean already the, so many the, times, the, like the, the racist of, Japanese guy. The the like battery power of all these different member berries is like they're actually resorting to the fucking what were they called? The Mod people, Modians or something. I don't uh, remember. They, they were species. called racist Japanese people. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, because to impersonate their voices, you might get cancelled. Yes, <laughs> I know. If you need to do their voices, <laughs> then you need to speak like We are from <laughs> the Trade Federation. <laughs> <laughs> this is impossible. This is impossible. We really rake, we really rake <laughs> the Empire. Like, ooh. I will say, though, they had some good lines. They like, have right uh, sabers. <laughs> but when he says, uh, uh, now there are two of them, classic. I don't, now there are two of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. <laughs> now there are two of them. <laughs> and they talk to just the guy in the spooky cloak. <laughs> like, they just hope the And now we believe the test of a high quality supplement <laughs> is like testing totally not evil. Te after <laughs> test. What the fuck? God dang it. Why are you putting on a stupid voice on the hologram? It's Mr. The, Cloak. It's the ads from Bounding. Right sabers. <laughs> Are there any wrong sabers? Uh, no, no. Um, we haven't had a pink one yet, but I'm. Well, okay. I don't know that, that for a fact. To, 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 you put it out happen. there, didn't you? I don't know that for a fact. There's going to be somebody in the chat goes, well, actually. <laughs> there was lots of uh, Jedi Sentinels in the trailer up there. Uh, following this brief montage, a character is shown climbing the face of what appears to be some kind of temple. There are then a number of scenes which appear to be inside the temple. In one of them, a female force wielder. Well, what else would there another be in Disney Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> Launches what appears to be a force attack on a man. Again, what else would it be? With that? It would be Disney Star Wars. However, the scene cuts before we see the results of an attack. The scene cuts to a pair of Jedi exploring some kind of a cave. One of them draws a, a right saber, <laughs> indicating there might be some kind of danger imminent. <laughs> we never see what it is or no, no, what Gary, it could be. Wait, 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 wait. No. In the trailer, yes. folks, yeah. he doesn't just ignite his lightsaber in the cave. He ignites his lightsaber and does the Anakin flip. Ooh. So all so all the performing seals started to clap at the uh Star Wars event. He did an Anakin! Okay, there there seems to be excessive flipping in Disney Star Wars when it's not necessary. <laughs> all right. There's also excessive flicking of if, the beam. If you have the force, yes, that's <laughs> true. If you have the force and you're and you have the ability to jump and flip, you would only do it to dodge something. If you want to attack somebody and you have a straight line, the best way not to do it is to flip and let yourself be vulnerable for even a second. Against other Force users. Although but everybody's Gary. retarded in Disney Star Wars, so they don't do things like when somebody puts their lightsaber up like this, cut them in half. Unless they're a robot. It's, then it's they not like it. anyone yeah. in Star Wars before has flip, tried to flip over somebody and had all their fucking limbs cut off. Even the fucking spooky ghost made of farts got slashed. He didn't get cut in half yeah. or anything. Got slashed. There's a little line on him. It's like, okay. I find it boring. Life it really is. Suck the baseball bats. Should have taken his head off. Should have cut his head off. Hell yeah. Uh, Not that it would have made the fight any better. Remember when no. everybody was wondering, what was it? What was he called again? Oh, Maroc. The Maroc. Uh, yeah, remember when everybody was like, had theories about him and he, yeah. he was just a force fart? <laughs> yeah. Yep. And he didn't even come then, back. I thought he might. Then... Come on, you go. 
I, I was just saying that, like, you, you think maybe that they had the excuse there to just keep regenerating him, but they didn't even do that. I say well, that, that. Just, maybe they will in episode eight. That was this then, after, yeah, because after that, the speculation was that it was part of the Dark Sisters had sort of created yeah. so that the stormtroopers that Thrawn has, they're all different and weird and broken because they are also fart clouds. But when they fought against Ezra and his, I don't need the force, I don't need a blaster. By the way, holy shit, I need to take this Stormtrooper's blaster and kill 15 people, otherwise I'm going to die. Dude, uh, they just died. They weren't fart clouds. It's stuff like that that I actually just don't get it. Like on set, where they had him shooting a bunch of stories. Like, wasn't the whole point that he only needs the force? Didn't he say that? That's his thing. And that actually explains why he didn't pick up the lightsaber and the blasters from Sabine. No. And then you just give him a blaster. Like, okay. No. No, uh, that that is what explains not giving him the lightsaber because he's a man. Uh huh. That's yeah. all that explains. That's all it, that it is. Doesn't lo it doesn't logically explain why. It's just Disney's excuse to not give Ezra the lightsaber and have Ezra go and actually do something heroic. No, it's Sabine. The show is Sabine. It's not even Ahsoka. It's the Sabine show. Well, I hope you don't mind me. It's the uh, Flick Your Sabine show. Seems yeah, it's it. retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it is retarded, but that's just it. We we are we are dealing with a distinct lack of logic. I don't need the lightsaber. I don't need your blaster. I just need the force. The force is my ally, and that's all I need, I believe, is what Ezra said. Until he needed then, the blaster. <laughs> exactly. Then within within a couple of minutes. He's picking up a blaster and literally mowing down six or so stormtroopers with the blaster, showing that he was a fucking idiot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Yep. That about sums it up. That about sums it up. All right, back to that's it. where we are, though. That's where we are. We're not allowed to have. I mean, it's fine for Balin because Balin's a bad guy, uh, but you're not allowed to have that heroicness coming from a male because Ezra is actually, and I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit further. Ezra is actually force sensitive. Ezra is actually trained in the Jedi arts. So Ezra would show Sabine up with his use of the lightsaber and Disney can't have that. Disney can't have that. We can't have a man show up a woman in no. our shows because it's it, it, Star Wars is now uh, broken penis envy middle aged women in space. That's Star Wars, Disney Star Wars. Yep. Oh, that's my alarm for the real BBC. Sorry. All right, there you go. Uh, next, we see another montage back to uh, the acolyte. The next thing is going to save Star Wars and get the seals clapping. Uh, <laughs> Now that is a gas problem right there. <laughs> Those are supposed to come out of your ass. It did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, just thought of a joke. It was called Disney Star Wars. Uh, next, we see another montage, including a Jedi using the Force to open a door. Is that how you open <laughs> doors? Uh, a man peeking around a corner. Three Jedi appearing in front of someone and a woman walking through a crowd of other women. <laughs> okay. Other women. I love that description. A woman walking through a crowd of other women. <laughs> that is fucking Star Wars right there. That is Disney Star Wars. Uh, it's female. It, it then returns to the battle in the bar with a female Jedi as she uses the force to stop the assassin's blade in its tracks. Not the assassin's blade, Muller. Uh, as the clip transitions to the scene. Oh my scene. God! Oh my God! Uh, to this scene, a woman states, this isn't about good or bad. This is about oh. power and who's allowed to use it. Uh, the clip then... Uh, Leslie Headland, former Harvey Weinstein assistant, must have flicked her bean to that. Personal, line. yeah, personal assistant. Uh, the clip then shows a number of scenes with a man walking through a snowy covered uh, ravine, some kind of alien female wielding a 
spear-like weapon. John, at this point, we're just going to assume all characters you're talking about are women. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to point it out all the time. <laughs> I, I know you're trying to make a point very well, but I'm just going to assume. And I would just point out the dudes. Uh, and then uh, an assassin walking the bar, uh, walking open, uh, walking down an open street. It concludes with a number of a Jedi lighting up their lightsabers and standing at the ready. And that was the seal clapping scene at the end. And uh, Mahler had a great reaction to that, by the way. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. It's tiring Which, is what he, it is. He started clapping incessantly yes. and jumping up and down. God, I was so excited. He said, yes. there's a yellow. Yeah, there was a yellow. There was oh. a yellow. There was multiple yellows. It's yellow. I almost lost it because I was like, guys, I've been waiting for yellow for so long. And we got a yellow. Yeah. And isn't it, isn't it the, um, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, but isn't it the uh, Jedi Knights and Jedi Sentinels that use yellow lightsabers? This is when we need a kennel. This is all the I stuff. mean, not enough work has been done in the mainline movies to distinguish like meaning behind colors other than red is bad. That's why that's what you see from those reaction videos. Red, because like that's red. bad. It doesn't go much further than that. Like like the idea that, you know, depending on your color sort of defines what style or speed or um history or in experience, the... you know. In, well, it, it is explained in canon in, in, in you know, yeah, ex, yeah, what not. Uh, but Gary, like not in the a, movies. a quickie. Why is the new 52's Detective Comics number 19, seems to be a random number, actually an 80 page special? You're going to have to remind me. I... It's because it's actually technically the 900th issue of Detective Comics. Of Detective Comics, okay. Because the first run of Detective Comics, Volume 1, ended on 881. So this 19th issue turned it to 900. But then, after the new 52 ended, in fucking disaster, um, they brought back the first volume of both Action Comics and Detective Comics. Yes. And Wonder Woman as well, by the way. Uh, I hated the new 52. It was awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, forgive me. I've slept since then and read a couple of comics since then. Um, and it was forgettable. I only read some of them once. I stopped reading all of them, a lot of them all together because they were so terrible. I think I've only ever read the ones that I've read once. And I've, apart from Court of Owls, yeah, and I've Owls. never had the inclination to go back and, and read anything else. It's the only new 52 you I like. Check out Gotham Knights as you'd love it though. The Court of Owls are in that. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> Totally. Uh, you know what also is a great show is Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Hedlin. Uh, oh, sorry. The line of dialogue in the trailer appears to confirm showrunners, uh, former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hedlin's assertion to Empire that the series will, uh, I think Empire Magazine, uh, that the series will have a heavy emphasis on current day politics. It's more likely the series will provide a heavy dose of intersectional feminist theory in the wow. guise of Star Wars. Um, John, that's Why so all cynical? Disney Star Wars has been since the <laughs> get-go. Even fucking Rogue One has intersectional feminism in it. The Force Awakens has intersectional feminism Feminism, minimum, The Last Jedi is pure intersectional feminism. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker is a piece of shit created by a hack that has intersectional feminism. It's all a fucking the Mandalorian. All of it, all of it has intersectional feminism in it. We use the word woke a lot, but Disney Star Wars is intersectional feminist. The the space opera. That's what it is. Uh, Headland told Empire, when you're doing something completely original like we are, what? You're doing something completely original with Star Wars? Is it weird to say it's completely original? Yeah. Yeah. I would say you might have made some original characters, but it's not completely original. And she's the writer. She is the head writer of the show. Um, like we are, you want to question the status quo of the era that you're that you live in by repeating the status quo of current year Hollywood over and over and over again. Uh, 
this is when the people who think they are the rebels are the system. But, you know, evil people don't really believe they're evil. Can I just say that uh, that Wookiee's expression is me when it comes to Star Wars? Is that a man <laughs> bun? <Is> that a <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a man bun. Probably your height, actually, Mona, in all fairness. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Big, well, he just I mean, doesn't, doesn't want to be. Look at him. Look at her. Oh, so Could, bored. You know, do you know what? I think Leslie Helen sh should really try harder to look like a lesbian. Um, quarter, <laughs> quarter Black Garrett has the best quote about Leslie Hedlund of all time. <laughs> when when asked specifically, "Hey, she was Harvey Weinstein's assistant. Why didn't she? Uh, why didn't she get any, any trouble?" And he said, "She's far too ugly to assault." Oh. <laughs> I disavow. I don't. I disavow immediately. <laughs> oh, hi, Reddit. Go fuck yourself. Oh my God. <laughs> Nobody likes you, you don't even like yourself. You don't even like yourself. Oh. Uh, <laughs> A lot of emotions. Yeah. Uh, she continued, what I think is so interesting right now is that everybody thinks they're right. Uh, like you. Uh, the Jedi really think they're right, and George Luke and George tells us that they're wrong in Phantom. Uh, they missed a huge aspect of the dark side rising. They just felt like a fertile ground to look into what's going on for all of us right now. But see, they, they, they went over that 200 years later. So you're going to go over it again 200 years earlier. Um, Mar Mark Millar uh, said on Twitter yesterday something I've thought for a long, long time. While I have watched and enjoyed some prequels, enough! Enough fucking yeah, prequels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking stop with the fucking prequels. Prequels are, prequels are largely based on what is essentially backstory to help fill in the lore of the current story that's moving forward that you're enjoying. And the whole point of that backstory is to keep some of it vague, leave it to your imagination, which can fill in the blanks much better than idiots like former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hedlund. Even George Lucas couldn't fill in the backstory for Star Wars better than the fans who knew little tidbits before uh, the prequels came out. And uh, I, I promise you, the story that played out in all of our heads was better than what was produced, as much as people liked them. Uh, nobody cared about baby Darth Vader. We don't need to see, why, why didn't we just see the, con well, it was Immaculate Conception, but like, you know, why, why not go back and see Shmi's uh, parents fuck and have Shmi? <laughs> like, what's stopping them? We don't need to see it. We don't need to see it. When you said that, I was thinking of Shmi. Shmi, 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 what the fucking <laughs> Shmi is Anakin's father. Shmi, I thought it's Shmeg. Shmi, it's Shmeg. Oh, it's Shmi, Mario. Uh, somebody asked about a prequel for Big Game, and Mark said uh, zero chance. Uh, all the info you need is in Wanted and Big Game. I also have this thing about prequels. I don't think they're ev they've ever been good. One. Uh, there's ever been a good one as we know what's coming later. People subconsciously zone out. I could not agree more. Mark Millar. Uh, all right. Back to uh, Leslie Headland. She's going to start talking about, um, is it more star Wars? No, her being a lesbian. Uh, not only did Headland confirm the show will be a commentary about current American society. Oh, are they going to talk about authoritarianism? Um, censorship, uh, lying about a certain experimental shot from a pandemic, a galactic pandemic, uh, possibly uh, frauds in certain uh, sh changes of uh, peaceful changes of power. I'm trying to word this correctly. <laughs> or uh, is um, is everybody going to be about Trump? I think it's going to be about Trump. Uh, culture and politics, but she seemed to imply the focus of the show being on female villains are self-inserts. When I was a younger queer girl... Yeah, fuck off. Just... Fuck off! 
That... Entertainers, I don't give a fuck what you do with your fucking genitals. It's not important. You're not important. The entertainment is the fucking important bit. Fuck off. You're doing nothing for anyone, you stupid bint. Nothing. All you're doing is you're showing exactly how separate and distant and, and far away you are from a fucking audience, from a fucking people who actually love this stuff. This is about me. Listen to me. This is my shit. No, you're not interesting. You'll never be interesting. Nobody will ever care about you. But what they do care about is what you're fucking ruining. So shut the fuck up. Make a show to entertain people and fuck off. Sick and fucking tired of this fucking or Dan Vasco fuck yourself. Yeah, he's gonna go I cut this. He's gonna cut and this. Fucking tired. <laughs> <I'm just> gonna <laughs> <say>. <laughs> Every single fucking time somebody's into Dude. Oh, this is this is my As. this is about my fucking queen. This is about my fucking color. This is about my fucking. Oh, As. shut up. As remember when we were talking yesterday and I started the conversation oh. with when I was a young straight boy. Yeah. Nobody yeah. fucking talks like this. Nobody no. talks like this outside of Hollywood. Yes. Shit. Where identity is everything. That's it. That's all you're driven by. When I was a young identity, boy. Identity, identity, identity. When I was a young boy who uh, had the aspirations to plow some pussy. Um... <laughs> yeah, that's very heteronormative of you, I'm afraid, Thank Gary. You. That's not acceptable. Thank you. Oh, it's so fucking tiresome. This is why you get rants that go boring because you're so fucking boring. Dude, it, I mean, we read a lot of these articles, but this this bitch sounds like every other fucking person we have heard over the last six or seven years. It's actually gone longer, but Jesus. Uh, this is a bitch, dude, who fed women to Harvey Weinstein. Yes. She then, when she left his employment- the Judas goat. She then wrote a play about a boss who abused his power to, to oh 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 that sounds that sounds really fucking coincidental. And got Leslie. awarded for it. Got fucking awarded for it. Like I sat back and watched tons of women being abused. Let's yeah. write a play and didn't say a fucking word. <laughs> but my identity protects me. My gender protects me. Yeah. My fucking intersectional bubble in Hollywood protects me. You so, oh, you just fucking Star Wars is fucking dead. Uh, if she it's was dead uh, and it's in the hands of a fucking necrophilia company called Disney, and then she gets fucking hired by Kathleen Kennedy, Mrs. Force her forces female herself. She brings in somebody who witnessed women being abused and didn't say shit, wrote a play, and got fucking awarded for it because she's a gay woman. Yeah. So fucking, it's just, it's oh God, it's everything's doomed. Mainstream, ma mainstream franchises are all doomed. All of them. We'll talk about DC later. That's doomed. <laughs> that's fucking doomed before that's even started as well. The whole thing's fucking doomed. <sighs> Where was I? Oh, hey, God, I hope she brings up that she's queer again. I really do. Yeah, yeah, please do. Please uh, do. When I was a young queer girl, I was just uh, hanging out with uh, Ursula uh, and Harvey and watching women getting abused. I put that part in. Uh, Ursula, I was hanging out with Ursula the Sea Witch and flipping her, flicking her bean to it. What? Uh, from the Little Mermaid, uh, she told the outlet as a queer, wait a minute, I thought she was a trans allegory. I don't care. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Wait, here comes the other one. It's, As it's a amazing, G Gary, when you're a narcissist, it's, um, sorry, dude, but when you're a narcissist, it's amazing how everything seems to be about fucking you. No, I'm, I'm cringing at the fact that she, okay, I'm going to read this entire thing again so we get it in context. When I was a younger queer girl, I was just hanging out with Ursula, the sea witch from Little Mermaid, she told the outlet, as a queer girl growing up. She got it in there twice. Twice! Oh, no. If you don't identify with the heroes and the villains show up, then all uh, and the villains show oh, up they're and they're all coded. queer coded. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you guys have seen the whole like superheroes 
uh, just inherently queer because of the fact that they're closeted about a particular thing. When it's just like, well, at that point, anybody who has a secret about anything is now queer coded, I guess. Yep. Up oh, rough. <laughs> I this is know, not I this is that. stark raving narcissism. It is everything's about me. And it, everything's about my experiences. It's totally it unhealthy. Straight coded. Uh, <laughs> <cancelled>. <laughs> no, it, it, to not be coded as something to mean you have this. Okay, I'm, let me finish the sentence and I'll tell you why. Uh the, the very obvious reason. This will be speaking to Hollywood. Nobody in the chat, because you're all smart. Uh you're like, yes, that's me. No, this isn't healthy. You're talking about maybe you're questioning yourself as a teenager when you're gay and you're insecure. That's normal. That's called growing up. Everybody's insecure about shit. But there's a point where you get to 40, 50 years old, and you have to develop something called, it's called a thicker skin, self-esteem, some confidence. It's called not giving a fuck. It's being okay with yourself. It's called being comfortable in your skin. And what we're seeing with all of this, you know, the attacks on J.K. Rowling, everything we see on Twitter, this push of vic victimization because the people in power want you insecure, want you questioning yourself all the fucking time. A very secure gay person doesn't need to run around and tell, uh, start every sentence with, well, as a gay man, as a gay woman, they don't say that shit. They go, what's up? This is an unhealthy person pushing her insecurities uh, and blaming everything else. That's why so many insecure people blame the system because they're powerless people and they're powerless because they're not okay with themselves. They're not okay with what they see in the mirror. It's as simple as that. Uh, when you have to demand what people call you, that's your problem. It's not mine. It's not as is. It's not Mahler's. It's not x-ray girls. It's your fucking problem. Is the Death Star straight coded because it's just like a big testicle? Yes, no, it's, probably, it's probably gay. What about? No, Cthulhu? it can't be gay because it got destroyed twice. It's just, it's a it's a round spherical uh, ouroboros of the heteronormative. I don't fucking. Do care. you think it's just an accident that three women are holding fucking balls in the in Ahsoka, dude? I mean, no, it's not. Dave Filoni gets pegged. Uh, when I was a younger queer girl, oh my God, did I read that again? I'm sorry. Headland added, oh no, she says it again. Headland added, as a queer filmmaker, you're going to see some camp. Okay, so she just stereotypes herself. All gay people like camp. Did you know that? I do now. Uh, inevitably, but I would say that tonally our references are darker. What? What? She, she, sounds, why? she sounds very bigoted. What's with, what's with all this like weird, almost like uh, blocking in of exactly what to get from anyone who is queer, therefore they do, like, like you just said, with camp, but also with like, oh, darker content. It's like, no, not necessarily. I think she sounds like somebody who used to be a former assistant to Harvey Weinstein who led women to the slaughter, who's now willing to say fucking anything to not get canceled. <laughs> Include. Well, you keep you keep telling people that you're queer, and you keep you keep showing you keep shields up. You keep putting that shield up, yep. that protective shield. That how dare you criticize me? Shield. I've said I'm queer three times in this article. How dare you criticize me? Because we all 30, know <laughs> shields at thirty <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> Need to talk about <laughs> self in the third person is queer. <laughs> shields up the fact that it's it's just ridiculous, man. It's it's so. Typically, Holly weird. It really is. It is. It is a town that is so unbelievably disconnected. And uh, it, it, like we have, we were talking about Molly. We were talking about just basic government. They don't know about basic fucking government. These are people writing about politics, politics within a fake world, but basic politics that you have to have a basic understanding of. You know, Ronald D. Moore had a, a pretty good understanding of politics with uh, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, I think, yeah. I, um, because I was gonna say the same goes for like um Babylon Five or or other things yes. they, like there's governance and policy and stuff. But it's kind of baffling to me. Like these are the same people that would very likely point out like where the government is corrupt and how we need to shake up the whole system. Blah blah. blah. And it's like I just saw what you think is an ideal idealized system where um a higher up with power just completely subverts all of it because they like the person who's currently in trouble for having gotten people killed and subverting orders. Like 
you want corruption, apparently. And I didn't yes. even know that you know you wrote it. And I don't I don't like dragging Leia into it too. It's like, why are you making her shit? And it's like, well, I mean, of course they well, are. Well, Hollywood uh, is politics politics <laughs> politics by feelings. Not well, by using your fucking yeah. brain at all. And we've we've got a, a prime example in Ahsoka. Yep. Because in Ahsoka, Hera went to the Jedi Count uh, went sorry, went to the Republic Count uh, Republic Council to request to look into the potential um coming back of Thrawn. And they said after you know, some of the council members were like, mm? and some were like, no, specifically the Asian dude. <laughs> yeah. The and dude. So they went to have a vote. Yes. The council mm -hmm. voted, came back and said no. So the majority of the of the Republic Council voted no. Then in the last episode, we have Hera saying to the Asian senator, Oh, I just didn't I didn't go along with you. No. You didn't go along with the vote. So, you know, Mon Mothma can look as smug as she fucking wants. The fact of the matter is that the actual council voted no, not the one man that a woman could yeah, just stand there and berate a man. They pretended as though all of them don't have the same power that he did, you know, on the council, the equal yep. parts. And, they and like I said, Mon Mothma went along with all of it, and then after it was like, by the way, all of that was bullshit, right? And then Hera was like, yeah. Corruption. Like, how, how yes. is it okay when you do it, but it's not okay it's, when Palpatine it, does it? Right? It's corruption. It's uh, it's treasonous. It's fucking treasonous. It's, it's fucked up. She got two people killed. She did. Does yeah. anyone care? No. No, nobody cares because about they've th never been mentioned, and they'll never be mentioned again, they just even... like Wade. Yeah, they, well, they didn't even get the Wade, Wade treatment. Nobody said, like, oh, no, Frank. Nobody did. They were just like, oh, they did. <laughs> Remember, as they forget about it in seconds, they cut yes. to the cockpit, and the kid goes, I have a bad feeling. I have a like, two people just really? died. Two like, people have just fucking exploded, you stupid brat. <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling, and I'm not fucking force sensitive, you dumb. F okay. Give my child a shouldn't really shout <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Th those pilots, there was how many, was there four X-Wings that went along with the Ghost? Yeah, five, five. So there was five X-Wings plus the Ghost. 40% of the X-Wings were destroyed. Yes. And this is a mission that she had no fucking right to just assault that way and was told not to. And yes. She just did it and anyway. And all those people were off mission as well. They did it for her. And, and, and don't nuts. forget, don't forget, she took her son with her. Yep. She. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's after like an entire season of the Mandalorian taking <laughs> a little baby Yoda in the fucking battle. Uh, yeah. They're, yep. they're so retarded. Give him now, a battle droid. <laughs> and there's a little thing. I bet because I okay. I had to. I watched it all the way through yesterday. I watched episode one through episode seven in one sitting. It was fucking brutal. I fell asleep a couple times for good long spells, so I had to go back and watch the episodes again, which made it worse. And you mm. notice little things, and you're going to think, in isolation, they're fine, but, like, when Ahsoka was in the ocean for 10 hours, uh, not breathing, and yeah. didn't have to spit up any water when she got back up, by the no, way. She's fine. She's fine. <laughs> I just wanted to... I, I just... I, I had forgotten this scene, so I'm like, oh... Uh, a woman pilot's going to go save her. So the woman pilot goes and save her, and the guy who's, like, pulling her in the woolen pilot is, like, the, the the guy who's, like, three times bigger. This woman pilot's, like, five foot. And you're, like, oh, inside, that's no big deal. No, it's that I predicted it. We could just, like, the dude will always be in the background, and the woman will always be taking lead because it's intersectional feminist dog shit. And when yes. you can start predicting this stuff, that means they are deliberately putting in it. Like, Somebody wrote a script, and they're like, well, that's got to be a woman saving Ahsoka. we got to have a woman saving Ahsoka. So that's producers. That's a producer's note. And that, Who knows? Does it come from uh, Kathleen Kennedy? Probably. Probably. Put put the women in the forefront at all times. I can see that, that being a directive. Uh, Were both from, the pilots killed male, by the way? Uh, no, no. No. One was alien. Probably a one dude, though. Was, Probably a dude. One was, yeah, one was alien, and one was a dude. One was a dude. 
I thought it was going to yeah, be the I was white guy. Say, I remember them both being guys, but I can't remember. I was a little exactly. shocked it wasn't the white guy. I, when I saw the white guy, I'm like, oh, he dead. <laughs> yes. He dead. Uh, great comic guy. It's okay. He's probably he he's probably already dead now. He probably went back and tripped up. And well, fell he, down no, no, and broke his no, neck. no. He got court martialed. <laughs> yeah, he, yes! he, he got put in jail for twenty <laughs> years for sedition. <laughs> so you guys, you're making that joke, but the fact is, all five of the X-wing pilots did betray their orders. Like they, they, they did. So yes, there is a good chance they wouldn't be as much, in as much trouble as Hera. But remember, Leia covered Hera. They, yep. those individual pilots, might actually still uh, end up with some level of punishment. Uh, maybe they don't get coverage from Leia. The Asian guy didn't. The well, Asian pilot didn't. You know, Shorty McFatboy. He 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 just waltzed into the proceedings and then started chatting to the senators. Makes it looks like he's fine. That it's white boy's in prison got... for twenty years. We know that, that is one hundred. We got one more episode to make Hera's story fucking worthwhile in any way because she's gotten like no. Nothing. The only thing worthwhile is the long, gratuitous ass shots of Hera. Yes, which I don't complain about. Okay, and they really wanted to make sure those were in there, and you know what? Oh, that's, they did. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> All right. It was probably directed by Leslie Headland. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you know Leslie Headland's a lesbian? No fucking way. Way. Really? I think you'll find she's queer coded. <laughs> she's queer coded. I don't know. I, I I don't know why she was cosplaying <laughs> Lily this, Singh hey, though in that hey, video. Hey, but... hey, after this show, she better learn to queer code. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm gonna give myself I think a she's learned that pretty well in all fairness. Thank you. That's the show, folks. Good night. No, I'm just kidding. I'll never top that. It's my greatest joke ever. Mm. Back in June 2021, Hedlick confirmed she's a lesbian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Confirmed the series would be female-centric during an interview with the YouTuber Fantastic it's Frankie. Female-centric. All Star Wars is female-centric. Even a fucking Mandalorian is now female centric. Hey, hey, you know what isn't? It'll be Andor. He's dead. Yeah, but I just <laughs> say he got blown up on a planet, and he was blown up in a female centric movie. In a female centric but, movie, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> The force is female! The force is female! God, I want to get on the shill interviews just so I can be in one where I'm interviewing Leslie Headland. She goes, well, I can tell you one thing about the show. It's, and I'm going to go, female-centric! <laughs> like, quick Odin! <laughs> Do you think they'll make a female Death Star as a little pink bow? <laughs> God, I hope so. Well, they it's, got, no, it's they, got a nipple, a nipple on the front. They, where the need, they, they need to make a death vagina. That's what they need to make. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Don't get my Yes. Oh no! Can it's gonna be the trench run. Plan? The trench is gonna start. It's gonna start there, and then it's gonna go around, and then there's gonna be a a circle at the top, which is the target. No. Yeah, I'd hit the spot right around the side. You know what the best part of Disney Star Wars is, and there really is a good one. Making fun of it because it's so fucking stupid. It's so easy. I, I, I'd love to say that we're all geniuses here, but we're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> and neither so are they. <laughs> no, no. It's like I was saying earlier. It's like, what do you have? Like, all I need is the force. And then picks up blaster and shoots people. You're like, it's what like, are you wait a doing? minute. <laughs> Apparently, you needed something else, too. Somebody did a great. I think it might have been Mr. Bug. I'm just going to check. He did a great bit with that. Uh, he he just took the ah oh, here it is here it is here it is I've got it here I'll share it I'll share it I'll share it okay real oh. quick I got to finish this quote yeah and yeah and then yeah. we'll share 
She yeah, yeah. said, just because my show is technically, yes, female-centric, meaning it oh, centers around a female protagonist. I, I think we got that with the female-centric part. Uh, I, figured, I don't think yeah. it necessarily excludes men from the space, except it's female-centric, which is exclusion. Wait, wait, no, 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 Gary, go back up, please. I don't think that necessarily, necessarily excludes yeah, Interesting men. choice of words. Yeah, very interesting choice of words. So if you... If you go, hey, you excluded men from that, you're probably right. But if you go, well, I did see one guy get cut in half by a lightsaber, so it didn't necessarily exclude men. Yeah. Do you know Leslie Helen is queer? I, yeah. I, yeah. So what are you sharing? Oh, uh, this is... This is um, this is the, the powerful writing of Ahsoka, folks. Here. Do your thing. What thing? It's your lightsaber. Take it. You keep it. What? I don't need it. At least take a blaster. No. The Force is my ally. That's all I need. Five minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> Started <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the genius level of writing of Ahsoka, folks. Good choice of song, too. That's John Wick right there. Mm. One. Well, and the fourth one, actually. They brought it back. <sighs> Dear. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't even. I can't anymore with this... Uh... With this Ahsoka art, with this Acolyte article, we done. <laughs> Fuck this. Uh, what did we get out of it? More intersectional bullshit. It's female centric. Leslie Headland is former Harvey Weinstein assistant, and she's a lesbian. Thank you. So, what's your Star Wars show about? Lesbian. <laughs> We're coded. Mountain Dew uh. code, code queer. Code queer. Code queer. <laughs> Put code queer for ten percent off Disney Plus. Yeah. I could see them doing that. <laughs> I could see them doing that. Oh my god. That's I, what that have could I happen, done? Yeah. What have I done? When you what sign up, like type in code queer, and you. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> We'll find oh, out next Pride Month. God. Right, when I say Pride Month, of course, I mean 2024. Right. Oh. I'm getting uh, feedback. Through. Feedback? Yeah, yeah. Coming through somebody's speakers. I don't Still? hear it. Or... Uh, it's gone now. Oh, okay. There you go. It's gone all now. Right. Uh, so I guess we kind of talked about Ahsoka. Yeah, I watched all... Seven episodes. I'm getting mm. it, too. Did you Ugh. learn anything? I'm getting feedback, too, by the way. A little bit. Uh, did I learn anything? Um, I was Force able to, is female? I was, I was able, able to return phone calls and answer emails in between lines of dialogue. I had plenty of time <laughs> to do that. Um, I learned that people are looking for Thrawn. They found Thrawn then mm -hmm. talked to Thrawn, then went to go find their other friend and completely beat Thrawn's forces who retreated, but Th Thrawn decided to call it a win. Mm. <laughs> it's an interesting choice of words. Balin is looking for something and bailed on his Padawan to go look for something. Yeah. Sen basically sent it to get killed. Ahsoka had a dream. No, I'm still coming through. Feedback. Ah Ahsoka had a dream. Here. A Martin Luther dream. Ten. Test, test, test. Test, test, Yeah, test. it's not there now. <laughs> yeah. No, because so, you're muted. I don't think it's coming through your mic. It might be coming through your mic. Well, it could be me as well. Uh, but I don't know why. I haven't changed anything. Hmm. It's fine now. I was muted for like the last two, three minutes. Uh, Ahsoka had a dream about Anakin, and then started wearing white. Can you Ahsoka. please refer to her as her correct name, Ahsoka the White? Jesus. Please. Oh. 
<laughs> water. Ahsoka can people? breathe underwater when unconscious for hours. Uh, didn't breathe. The the force, I guess, saved her. I can't breathe. Gary, to quote Han Solo <clears throat> in The Force Awakens, that's not how the force works. That is not how the force works. But uh, apparently the force works in all kinds of ways. I, I also learned that... Uh, you can share your force visions with pe non force viewer uh, users. <laughs> you can, you can, okay. yeah. And uh, that's that's new. Okay. Can you hear the lightsabers, mummy? There was also a lot oh. of dumb as shit, man. <laughs> dumb how does as shit. How does the child force user hear her fighting Anakin in the world between worlds while listening to the ocean? What the fuck? With no because the world between training. worlds wasn't happening. It was all in Soka's mind. Was she making the noises at the bottom of the cliff going whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> let's say right because because Jason is force sensitive, let's say that Jason could project into Ahsoka's mind and you just put a connect, picture in my head that's hilarious. Right? I thought However, it was too. <laughs> if if Jason can then project what he can project into his mum who's not force sensitive. Then when Ahsoka reached out to Sabine, and Sabine was just like, oh, I I'm must be already bored. I, I, not from you. <laughs> just know, from I you know. fucking describing this, dude. It's because it's dog shit, Gary. <laughs> I, it's written by a fucking mole. Well, it feels like you're doing more effort than the actual show, because <laughs> I got the impression they were just saying, fuck it, everybody could hear it, because everybody's full sensitive, just like the end of TLJ, right? Broom Boy is like, oh, everybody oh, is. Fuck oh, it. Fuck Broom Boy. If he's if he's so fucking force sensitive, why is he a fucking slave, dumb fuck? Yeah, fly out of there with the force, like Leia. <laughs> it just it just space. <laughs> Thy force powers only only enable me to catch brooms. Oh. oh. You know when. When, 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 Le when Leslie Hedlin I... said she was a lesbian <laughs> three times in two sentences. I mean, that does sound like it'd be a really funny meme in, a, in an interview. It's like, so what are your biggest inspirations? And she's like, well, when I was a queer child, you're like, no, 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 no. I just want to know, like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's your favorite milkshake? Well, when I was a, a queer, queer no, child. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanilla was always queer coded. I always like Neapolitan. Yeah. <laughs> So what are you working on next? Well, when I was a queer, queer child. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. But by the way, folks, if you think what we're saying is just silly, Billy stuff, we know people. We actually know people that have pitched characters, stories to Hollywood. And Hollywood have told them, can you change this character black? Can you change this character gay? Can you not do the pitch because you're a white male? Yes, that's you the have, one. Do you have somebody that can do the pitch for you? Can you find somebody diverse? to team up with? Or, uh, yes. sorry, I can't hire you because you're white. And yes, and, straight. and that, folks, is legit. That's legit. Not even bullshit. 100% legit. And that's still against the law, by the way. It should be. <sighs> yeah. discriminate based on race and fucking sex is fucked up and yet and yet and yet and yet and yet nobody says anything because they want to get that possible next gig um did you see uh i think this bruce video where he pointed out the wga like a bunch of people were striking that were in the wga but don't get to vote because you have to make a minimum amount of money and the, the one guy he pointed out had made uh, that minimum amount of money, I believe, is somewhere around $38,000 over four to six years. So if you haven't made $38,000 in over four to six years as a writer in Hollywood, you're not a writer in Hollywood. So so a lot of people picketing didn't uh, were basically used... And the reason they went down to picket and the reason there's still actors picketing right now who probably don't have votes either is they think it's one big opportunity to show, you know, to show their solidarity and get jobs. Oy which vey. they're not going to get. 
And some of them are realizing that, and they're like, they're feeling a little screwed over. Welcome to Hollywood. Well, That's good news is some of them aren't coming back. Well, maybe you should have started every sentence with as a as a young queer girl. Queer oh, well, coat everything. When I was a queer girl. <laughs> my queer father took me I'm to just the a queer poor city. queer girl nobody loves me <laughs> the, pri the, the pride parade <laughs> oh, no. the pride the parade, parade. <laughs> oh. <laughs> where's that weird Al Yankovic song come on <laughs> uh, we just gave somebody an idea oh, oh. we gave somebody too many ideas today, especially discount code queer for 10%. <laughs> I know. I think learn to queer code is pretty good too. Learn to queer code is a beat. Uh, so, yes, um, Ahsoka ends tonight, thankfully. Do we get Luke Skywalker? As do we get Luke Skywalker? Uh, no. No. Oh. No, because he's do we get the a... least most important character in Disney <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> do we. As do we get a mention of Luke Skywalker? No. Mahler, do we get Luke Skywalker? Uh, this is hard to predict because I could see Dave pulling out a bunch of cards in terms of like, okay, I got to make people think that a season two needs to happen, you know? <sighs> so if I give them Luke or mention of Luke or bait of Luke, they like Luke. I've heard <laughs> he's apparently a character in Star Wars, maybe. Uh, I could see him doing it. I you know could. Who, you, I'm not sure though. Okay, do the oh do we get a mention? Of Luke. I'm, I'm wondering whether or not we're gonna see fucking Anakin again. Because now they've said that he recorded oh, 20 yeah. messages for yeah, her. So. I think I think we do get that. Next question. You don't have to answer. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay. What about Han and Leia? Is Leslie Headland gay? <laughs> is is was Leslie Headland a young queer <laughs> queer girl? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no um will we get han and leia or just the millennium falcon i could buy a thing where like ahsoka's like we're having a meeting with higher ups in order to deal with thrawn and then she walks in a room and you can see like the silhouettes or the back of the three of them or something i could see him doing that maybe i could see ahsoka saying Oh my god, Star Wars! And that's it. And that's the that's just the, the whole show. Well, in this show, they've said the heir to the Empire and they've and, already said it. They've and, already and said a that. galaxy far, far away. Yeah. But they said the he's the heir to the Empire. How? Doesn't make any sense. Um no. In a in a throwaway line, Gary. A mm -hmm. throwaway line. Will Shut we up. will we see one of the reactors visibly ejaculate on screen if Luke comes yeah. out? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember yeah. as well um, when Hera was asked to explain why Thrawn coming back is more of a deal than any other Empire remnant? Do you remember what she says? Because you said you rewatched it, right? Yes. So she says that um, he's killed friends of mine. Yes. It's like, uh huh. Okay. I mean, a lot of people have killed a lot of people. Like, why, why, why does it? You'd think that they would focus on he's one of the most intimidating and creative generals the, the, the Empire ever had, or admirals, whatever. And that uh, with him, they'll be bound together, and with him, they'll actually be able to create something. And he's like, no, she, she says he, he killed friends of mine. He killed friends of mine. Like, you're not doing a good job convincing them this isn't a personal thing. Yeah. Well, do you know who's not <clears throat> going to say you killed friends of mine? Hera. Well, yeah, because she doesn't even remember who were her friends, apparently. Those people explicitly came because they trusted her, and then they died. So, God, you, you so know, so the council didn't even mention the, 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 the Republic Council, whatever you want to call it, didn't even mention the fact that two people were killed because of her actions. No. No, because I'm. it's a. It's probably a team of writers writing for Filoni, and they they probably constantly write themselves in the corners and just have, hey, let's just have Ahsoka uh, lie in the water for 10 hours having a dream. Well, yeah, and those two that got killed in that episode, He's... they probably were like, have them blow up. It'll be fun to look at instead of it feeling like nothing happened. Some people yeah. will be like, oh, look, something happened. No, there's no there's no consequences. This world feels small. It doesn't make any sense. Um, Go ahead and drink. One Piece. There's a two-part story where they introduce Usopp. 
So in this two-part story where they introduce Zoop Usopp and they eventually just get their ship uh, and they sideline Luffy, we get introduced to two characters. We get a major backstory to one, uh, Zoro. We get a major element to his character with the with the kids flashback, which is absolutely brilliant. We get one of the best lines of dialogue from the year. A girl uh, can beat a boy, but a woman can never beat a man. And the follow up to that. Uh, we also get introduced to another villain, Kuro of the Thousand Plans, who's a speedster with fucking knives coming out of his eye. And it's all shot in a horror, uh, in like a horror setting. Great production design. We're introduced to Kaya. We're introduced to all these characters and new elements in two episodes. Uh, this much didn't happen in Obi Wan, Ahsoka, and uh, and and Boba Fett. Do you remember when Zoro said, when I was a queer young boy? Yeah, I remember that. Le <laughs> learning how to use a sword. <sighs> you know when Luke said you failed your highness and that you'll never join him, and then the camera cuts over to Palpatine and he says, you know, when I was a queer young boy. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a queer young <clears throat> senator. Oh, you're right, chat. I, I sit corrected. They had they had space whales, this episode. Oh, I hope they come I, back. Legendary. I was gonna say I can believe the space whales might make an appearance tonight. Holy fuck! The end of that ep that particular episode, Mahler, goes on forever. Yes. After they wake up Ahsoka <laughs> and she's like, and the whales come and she goes to the whales and and does something with the whales that goes on for like ten minutes. So when I first watched the episode, and then I was like, okay, I need Fringy to watch it now because like I, I want to talk to him about it. When uh, you know everybody was buzzing about the world between worlds scenes, yeah. When you hit the last one, uh, Fringy was confused. He was like, "We're only halfway through the episode." And yep. I was like, "I know. Yeah, yeah. You've got shit tons of nothing left. <laughs> There's nothing in this fucking episode." And the last half is them getting to the space whales. And yeah. and, and the acting is atrocious. Uh, uh, Asian pilot guy is fucking terrible. I mean, I like when I first saw him cameo in Mandalore in the Mandalorian, I thought he was like John Favreau's friend or something that he put I in. Get, I, 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 I get I, the impression I, that he should be in SNL skits, he shouldn't really be here. He's acting like they're SNL skits from current SNL, by yeah, the way. Yeah, current when he had Filoni as one of the pilots and him as the other pilot. And I just thought, wow, is this trying to show that the Republic is completely out of shape and people? Uh, <laughs> was, the, was the war, has the wait, war wait, taken keep, such a terrible toll? He's like that... the only fucking pilot in the Republic. He just keeps turning up everywhere. It's weird. It's, uh, you, you do wonder if he, he like someone lost a bet to him or something. <laughs> it's like, it's, as, uh, as, he's gotten a it's deal. Been, it's been said many times, this is the smallest galaxy ever. Yeah. Yep. Do you think we'll get Tatooine? <laughs> God, I hope so. Or they'll just crack I on some desert planet that looks exactly they like They may be at the point where they're like, surely we're allowed to use Tatooine again now. It's been a while, guys. Come on. It's been like a whole season. Yeah. <laughs> You're using a sequel. That was Jakku, not Tatooine. That's different. That was a completely different desert planet that looked exactly Okay, so how much do you think gets resolved this episode? Well... Nothing. Uh, nothing because <laughs> Thrawn. No, but seriously, nothing because Thrawn's got to go into the film, so they can't defeat Thrawn. But Thrawn, but Thrawn can be probably weakened and escape. But nothing's going to get resolved because this is all just set up for the movie, which is coming out because when? Never. Hopefully. Never. Twenty twenty six, twenty twenty seven, seven maybe earliest. 27 dude nobody is going to give a flying f nobody's watching this uh as ryan said and i agree though we'll probably get a little bump from the anakin show but the ratings came out wasn't good it it had dropped 50 percent from uh the first two episodes remember remember they showed two episodes so they dropped 50 percent uh, dude there's a huge leak that's just come out from ahsoka tonight oh let's let's okay there is a another uh, Death Star being created. <laughs> you can add it. X-ray girl. There is, there is another. Yeah. They, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. 
That belly button looks deeper than mine. That's no moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the death vagina. The death vagina. <laughs> Quick, we need to do the trench run. <laughs> <laughs> Stay the way, on target. <laughs> call member, I, on the I, surface. I, call member, I don't want to say you missed a trick here, but if you do turn the Death Star over, then you do actually have a panty line available there on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> They're working under a deadline, okay? They're kind of like VFX artists at Disney Star Wars. Hey, did you know that the better? Hey, uh, I heard the horse is female. I heard the force is female. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, apparently so. I got this in France, in Paris, France. Le soleil jeunel oh, de Spidamon. Estrange. 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 But it's a cool, like, original painted cover. Can't, uh, I can't understand a fucking word in this, but uh, it's really cool. <laughs> no, I bought it on, I bought it on the street on uh, a bridge. There was a bridge, oh, wow. and there was a bunch of uh, newsstands, and people smoke. Go, you want to buy my magazine? And I said, yes. Of course. <laughs> no pets, no nothing, but maybe some smoke damage, you know. Some smoke damage. In France, we smoke all the time. They do. They really do. They don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. I love it. I love it. I was asking uh, on a, one of the EFAPs, like, how long do you think it'll be before we'll have to start explaining what smoking is to people? Well, pretty soon. Uh, depends where. Yeah. Like I mean, Europe, there's there's still a lot of smokers in Europe. Japan, very heavy smokers in Japan. Yep. These are cool. Uh, yeah, um, I'm thinking Ahsoka will be disappointing. Uh, the only way they can make up for nothing happening, like uh, like maybe the last part of the episode... Thrawn is taking off and the rest get left behind and then we go to the Republic and we see like a glimpse of Luke or Leia at the end to try to get the people to seal clap because man it worked as as Mahler brought up the dream sequence with Anakin that was not <sighs> Anakin he didn't come nope. back his story nope. is over by the way he came back in Obi-Wan um, yep. was halfway through the episode and everybody was screaming calling at and you said it's high. It's high. It's rated higher on IMDb than Empire. Yes. <laughs> than Empire. Half the fucking episode is Ahsoka staring at a fucking whale. It was a big whale, though. You guys just want to hate. Did stuff. you catch that, uh, Gary? They have this whole big shot of all the whales, then this huge one appears, and then it yes. cuts to Hu Yang, who goes. That one's bigger than the others. I know, <laughs> dude, and that's like the a, heck? that is literally I would have known. That that is about the fifth time they did something like that. When the mines are exploding, they're all mines are exploding. You know, like it's uh, like uh, you our know, they audience tell us, is retarded. Well, so we have I, mean, say, I don't want to insult the fans, but I mean, just some of the people we see reacting on Twitter, which probably I don't know, I'm going out on a limb here, isn't authentic. Just hmm. saying, um, might be. When somebody ignites a red lightsaber and you go, it's red. I don't want to pick on special needs people. I don't. I, I really don't. It's, enjoy, it's not. It's got you enjoy it's it, nothing you enjoy to do with it. that. It's everything to do with the fact that they think their audience are fucking stupid. Well, because it, they are. Because so they, they have are. to judge them based off their their own mentality. Well, they have no understanding. We did a red. We're telling you we did a red. So you pop. So you go. Um, 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 um. He vaded. I mean, we've got a fucking a woman, admittedly, who's been poisoned by peroxide. Go, I vaded. I vaded. That's that's their audience now. Well, they still Window put, lickers. They still put tits in metal her lot. That's good. I got a in 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 uh heavy metal. Red. This is heavy yeah, metal. Yeah, heavy heavy metals always have their flesh. Still. Yeah. Although it's now defunct. Because it's finished, doesn't it? It's been Bought out or the last Something, episode yeah. was These are thick. subsidized. The um, yeah. the big dramatic <laughs> ending of the next episode, my assumption is, would be as as pointed out, like it's it's like the realization, like oh no, we lost. Thrawn is back. Oh no, 
And that, that'll be like the, yes. the, almost the hook at the end, being like, oh. Okay, legit question. Okay. Le legit question. Because you never ask, uh, were you a young queer girl? <laughs> <laughs> when I was a young queer girl, uh, legit question. And I'm, I really am being serious, and I'd be very interested to hear both of your answers to this. Oh, God. Because we're in the final episode tonight. We are. Mm-hmm. This is meant to set up Thrawn as a as a threat for the Mando mo Mando verse movie. Okay, are we all in agreement with that? From Dave saying he wants them to play with Thrawn for a few years, yes, I yes. So. For them saying okay. that they're gonna have this all all the Mando stuff culminate into a movie, them saying that, yes, yes, yeah, okay. I, I believe um, that's their intention. Right, Thrawn, according to the according to Ahsoka is the heir to the Empire. And if Thrawn returns, then he could unite the Empire. Mm -hmm. Thrawn has a, a severely damaged Star Destroyer. And the posture of a seahorse. And he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> How exactly... Oh, and he relies on women with balls. For what we, I'm not exactly sure. To be honest with you, hey, I think they uh, were. I think all three of them were young queer girls at one time. Well, did you notice that he had to rely on the on the dark sisters, um, yeah. because he couldn't use his own fucking radar. So what they're what he, what Dave Filoni is doing is what he's always done. Okay, shout out to my boy Ryan. He's taking little pieces of the fucking EU and repurposing them into other characters. Uh, our boy Charlie from Emergency Awesome did a video that I'm th I think would make every Star Wars fan's head explode, but I completely agree with them. Uh, the little Bijan Frise, the poodle, is Mara Jade. Oh, my God. It's a, no. it's a repurposed Mara Jade, yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes, it is. I, 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 he did a whole video on it, and I completely agree with him. I know it's going to make just EU fans... <laughs> Well, so but, yeah, I've seen people going nuts talking about whether or not she's going to join Ahsoka. Well, yeah, I think she might. It's Mara Jade's uh, character repurposed like, into the the little um, the little dachshund. We're once again at this point where it's not about the character; it's just about whether she'll be good or evil. Exactly. Okay, you're right. That doesn't yes. matter, according to anyway. Fucking sucks. But, but the question okay, is: the well, question no, no, is she, you guys. she's she's a woman in Star Wars, so whatever evil she was, it was probably. Uh, Ray man. Stevenson's fault. It's a man's fault. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, she's in an unfair, unjust society, even though it's clearly an incompetent matriarchy, which, as, by the way, is just like the Federation in, in Kurtzman Trek is an incompetent oh, matriarchy. In incompetent. Earth was a, was a segregated <laughs> failure run by a fucking Democratic fuck, uh, candidate. Run by, a failing. run by a black lesbian. Yeah. Uh, in other uh, news, no, that's not fair. That's not fair. A morbidly obese, fat fucking lesbian. Um, and in other who, un who keeps in other unrelated news, are uh, the California's new senator is from Maryland and is a black lesbian. <laughs> that is stunning and brave. Stunning. So back to back to uh, the Bijan Frise. So the so the well the question the question for you guys is how Little how the fuck spaniel. is Thrawn meant to to unite the empire when through well, Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, yeah. So we're Snoke. He'll be here eventually, He's don't worry. Just cloning himself? Is he? Okay. Oh. The, um, the thing about it is, as if we kill a thousand as. stormtroopers in the next episode by the hands of Ahsoka, and then he gets away, in the next season, he'll just have another thousand. He'll just that is be true. There. Yeah. And yeah. be like, who's going to ally with him? We'll just get a bunch of bunch of characters. Who cares? A bunch of people you never heard of. They're all his allies now. That'd yeah, we're going to totally, we're going to die for this guy who's going to like lead us up to the swall uh, slaughter. You know, it's, I hate it so much because, like, you, you imagine a season of TV that covers Ahsoka and Thrawn both building up their positions p for the war that's to come. And, like, Thrawn, House of the Dragon style, actually has trouble getting his allies, like, yeah. convincing people, having to use leverage or threaten them or bribe them, like, having to watch him very intelligently have to do. It's just, it's just none of that's going to happen. He'll, he'll just turn up with a bunch of people, action scene, then runs away until the movie where he's allowed to be killed or uh, pre imprisoned, whatever. Yeah, Thrawn should have been like Tywin. I yes. mean, not dying on the toilet, but like doing 
horrible fucking shit. You don't win yes. every battle with soldiers. You you write a letter. You send a message. You create discontent. He should have been. Should have, he should have a fleet. And, and he does, he this on, have, um... To be fair, and I, I he does this in the books. I, I hear you chat, and I completely yeah, yeah. agree. This is what he does in the books. We're talking about the show. I was uh, I was talking on a different stream about how um, even making him lose intelligently, for lack of a better term. You remember Tywin in uh, season two? He believes he fully understands Rob Stark to the point where he's like, I know where you're going to go and I know what you're going to do. And they have scouts to confirm that. And Rob captures one of them, or at least in the camp. And um, all of Rob's like counsel, like kill him, execute the, sc the scout, Don't obviously don't let him go, whatever. And then Rob's like, nah, I'm going to let him go. And I want him to tell Tywin, I'm coming for him. I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to beat the fuck up. And I'm going to win. And like, you know, the rest of all of them are like, I don't know about that. That was a pretty stupid idea because that scout's just going to give information. And he's like, yeah, I hope he does. And obviously the scout tells Tywin, yep, Rob's really mad at you. Rob's coming to kill you. He's going to use his whole host. He's going to come after you. And then Tywin's like, lol, <laughs> I'm going to destroy you so hard. Yep. And then um, he does destroy the forces that turn up. And it's like, what, 200 men or something? It's yep. something small. Yep. And Tywin's yeah. confused. And it's like, yeah, because Rob just went after all of Jamie's forces instead and crushed them. And it's just yeah. like... It's a it's a loss, I think, that doesn't undermine Tywin. It's like, oh, I get it. I get how he made that mistake, and that was a pretty good move from Rob because he relied on the fact that Tywin thought he had it all figured out. And Okay, but what happened to Rob? Well, I was about to say, well, and then Tywin, Tywin said... doesn't really make much of a mistake go then forward until his death. Yeah, you get one. Well, he makes a major mistake his entire life by uh, shitting on oh, Tyrion. By shitting well, his, on Tyrion. his big strength yeah. is his big weakness, right? Like yeah. his obsession you... with family... If you're bringing back a, a huge villain or somebody who you want to even set up as a huge villain, then the villain has to fucking... Cr Remember the end of Empire where the where all of them are? Luke has lost his hand. He's, he's been kept, to, you know, kept together by a back to tank. Uh, Han is in... in <clears throat> he's been, you know, fucking cryogenically frozen. Uh, th they're in pieces. They're shattered. And, and the empire is crushing. The empire struck back. Yep. So we have the the setup for Return of the Jedi. Thrawn should should have crushed whatever was put in front of him. The, yeah. The end of his uh, empire was uh, th they escaped with their lives. That was their victory. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We got out alive, but we escaped. That we es that was that's that was what it. Take away. Go lick the wounds and come back, dude. I was like, I love that movie, but I was still like, no, I gotta wait three fucking years. And at the time, that's almost a third of my life. Three years was a long fucking yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Now it goes past in the blink of an eye. Now, now it's like, what now the you fuck? wish they would fucking wait. God. Wish they wait three fucking decades, mate. I know. Yeah. Not, I'm not even joking right now. Uh, it's it just there's there's no the, the characterization is so poor now. It, it's just it's so bad. Everyone is so badly written. It's all shit. from Sabine to Ahsoka to Ezra to to Thrawn. Too bad. We said we uh, said for like, I don't even know if you guys remember. We said for years on the run up, you guys don't want Thrawn in in Disney Star Wars. You do not want him. It's no be a big old monkey's paw, and uh, it's here. This is it. And another thing, I feel a little bit like am I insane or um. Didn't everybody like there was a, there was an era where Dave Filoni his reputation was very high up. It's uh it's been like fucking destroyed after all this. Yeah. As a writer, it's just like what the fuck is your capability exactly? Well, I mean, now we I... can, we we can clearly look back at uh, at Disney's mistakes, at Kathleen Kennedy's mistakes, and they were very early on. And the biggest one, the the biggest one of them all, was getting rid of the EO. It's the biggest one of them all. Yeah. And then, then you can follow it by hiring Jar Jar Abrams, not having a plan, hiring Lawrence Kasdan to come out and make up a script on the set. Uh, Rianne Johnson comes out and subverts all of that. They try to retcon it in another fucking movie, which kills the uh, cinematic, the greatest cinematic franchise of all time. Then they decide to spam a bunch of garbage on a streaming service that nobody wants, and Star Wars is dead. But, no, but Gary, they had to do that because Kathleen Kennedy herself said... We don't have decades of, of law to call upon <laughs> books and magazines. She should have been fired right after ah! saying that. 
Luke, Lucas should have gone, wait, the ink isn't dry on our contract. Kathy, give me just a moment, Kathy. And just fucking rip it up. Smack Bob Iger. You say stupid fucking retarded weatherman. I'm taking my shit back. I'm going to go back in time and make that happen. How, how can you. you be in charge of Lucasfilm and, and not understand what you had at, at your fingertips? Well, how could you be in charge of the Rings of Power and not understand what you have? How could you be in charge of Star Trek and not understand what you have? How could Marvel. you be in charge of Doctor Who and actually understand what you had and still subvert it? I don't fucking know! Because, a bear, because politics becomes... It's, it's identity and politics over story. Yeah. That's it. Identity and politics over story. And politics is politics within the story and your personal politics. If they don't 100% agree with mine, you can't work here anymore because you're a Nazi. So now, now, now that fucking Hollywood is losing money and more importantly has lost their relevance and that fucking, that one stinks. Yeah, Hollywood's lost money before, but losing your relevance stings. The, the, the reason... Les someone like Leslie Headland got a job was her identity. It yes. wasn't her her talent. She did what one fucking Russian doll or whatever. She did one fucking show. Oh, let's give her a Star Wars show. And she's probably more talented than some of the idiots they've given to Marvel projects. So, uh, which is not talented at all. It's all based on identity now. They're casting writers and directors not hiring them. Now they have to go back to hiring actual talented people. And we are going to get half the shows we were, we were going to get before half the stuff that you're seeing is just obligatory. I I'm pretty sure unless Kevin Feige is just shit out his brain that after echo drops and nobody hears about it, I still haven't heard much about it. Uh, <laughs> and after miss Marvel, uh, the Marvels comes out and Agatha and Ironheart, they're going to have to do a reboot. That's what everybody's talking about. Even the shills are saying it's time to reboot Marvel. There's just no logical way you can bring in the X-Men or the Fantastic Four. And when they do, they're not going to look like the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. This fucking, this is dead. You think anybody's going to give a shit? So, so Star Wars... Star Trek, it's it's all gone. They're going to start going to cheaper entertainment and probably more original entertainment. You know, uh, uh, I saw a, a trailer yesterday that as dropped. Fucking amazing trailer. I don't know how oh, good yeah. the movie will be, but I'm in. I'm there opening day. Take my yeah. fucking money. Yeah. Uh, Joel Kinnaman. Oh, okay, so Joel Kinnaman and Henry Cavill both were born in the wrong era. If they yeah. were born 10 years earlier they'd be two of the biggest action stars in Hollywood right now, without a doubt. Joel Kinnaman was great as Flag in, in Suicide Squad. He was great in Alter mm -hmm. Carbon. He looks pretty mm -hmm. good in this. He's been great in many other things. Henry Cavill That's should tough. be the world's biggest star, getting millions of dollars right up there with Tom Cruise money. He's not because we're in intersectional feminist woke fucking retarded Hollywood. It's not yep. like they can't make stuff like this. Remember, they don't want to make it. They Correct. could be making money. A Fantastic Four movie that looks that that has a that uh, Ben Grimm is a Jewish white guy. Uh, uh, Sue Storm is a blonde white woman. Mm -hmm. Johnny Storm, blonde white guy. Reed Richards, older little gray patches right here, white guy. That's what they are. Do you think they're going to cast that? No. But if they cast it, they would have a chance if they cast casted correctly to the comics. They'd have a fucking chance. So they're unwilling to do this shit. Because of politics and identity. It's cost them billions of dollars and cost them their industry. So, again, I go back to what really hurts them, relevance. They're not important anymore. Are we going to show the trailer? I don't... Can we? Cut it out uh, if it doesn't... If it gets I done. guess we can cut it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I want to show it. If you, Let's show it. It's I have it. It's I have Silent it. Night. It's John Woo doing a Christmas movie about revenge. And it's basically the Punisher movie we will never get from Disney Marvel. Mm. Ever. Do we get doves, though? Do we get doves? I fucking hope so. Hey, I, I mean, love Face Off. Not? I fucking love Face Off. I love Face Off. It Face Off. Remember when in Mission Impossible 2, which is possibly one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life, um, 
the doves just start taking off in the middle of a corridor in a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> happens all the yeah, time. Yeah, why not? Every why time. The fuck uh, not? Yeah. A a all the time. All right. Where were they? Roll okay. it, X ray girl. <clears throat> Christmas in the middle That's of fire. That's fire. All units, please respond. What's this macho bullshit? It's so butt. Death Sentence? No. Has you seen Death Sentence? Uh, Should I see may, Death Sentence? Maybe, but if I did, it's we're talking early 2000s. Any uh, any any information between you of what that film's about? How long ago did it come out? Uh, 2007. 2007? No. Mm. no. So, like, I think you guys would like it. The the basic premise is Kevin Bacon, very noble family man, just doing his thing. Um, he goes to the gas station with his son, who I think is heading off to college, like the following day or whatever. And a bunch of gangbangers sort of come in to steal from the place, but then they decide that as a form of initiation, one of their newer members can kill uh, Kevin Bacon's kid, and he does. And Kevin Bacon gets seriously wounded, and then the rest of the film is him finding out about every last member of the gang and killing them all. Yeah, that's called it's called that death, was great. It's called Death Wish. I mean, that's <laughs> I was gonna, I was yeah, gonna say, yeah, yeah. It, the, it, this this archetype of movie is just like so satisfied to watch. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It's a good, a good old revenge film. And if you guys haven't watched the Death Wish movies, get out there and watch them. Those Charlie Bronson movies, uh, especially Death Wish one, two, and three, are fucking amazing. Death Wish 3 is fucking insane. It's insane, and I love it. Yeah, John Goodman is in uh, Death Sentence as well, by the way. Oh, he is? is he? Okay. Yeah, he's like, um, he's the dad of one of the sort of gang members. Oh. And Kevin Bacon comes to him for weapons, and he finds out that connection that John Goodman was like, I don't give a shit, kill him if you want. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's fun Faced. as fuck. <laughs> but, uh, well, certain things get complicated. Obviously, I, uh, I'm i not giving away anything, because there's a lot of good payoffs in the movie, but... Um, yeah, I remember it being fun. Yeah, that just looks like it. That's just looks like a great revenge film. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Um, bit of fun. It's, it's clearly the middle of fucking summer, but it's Christmas, sure. Uh, or maybe it's just an LA Christmas. I don't know. Maybe that's what Christmas is. Down like. south, yeah. But uh, it looks. Uh, it just looks like a ton of fun. Fun. It looks entertaining. Perfect team up. By the way, the Azrael yeah, Batman yeah. with uh, Punisher, perfect team up. Uh, I got sent a bunch of comics by uh, Aaron. Aaron, I got a. Oh, they're good. We're going to see them in a little bit. That, now that that trailer looks uh, looks fun. Looks fun. I'm going to go see it. I saw Silent Night with uh, the, this one. Silent Night. What's the of uh, the Santa Claus one? Violent Night. Violent Night. Violent Night. Yeah. Not to be confused with Silent Night. Violent Night with uh, Chris last year. I liked it. It was fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It was the greatest movie I ever saw, but it entertained me for a couple of okay, hours. Would you, would you recommend? Oh, uh, I, uh, at home, streaming for free, absolutely, just for Santa's backstory. Don't pay for it. Just don't for Santa's for backstory, which can be connected to the Northmen if you really want to use your imagination. <laughs> that part was so funny because when they put that twist in, I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's why he it's like it. that's it's a sequel it's a spiritual sequel to the northman <laughs> <laughs> okay makes sense makes sense it, it works in the world, though. it does it's fucking hilarious <laughs> uh but yeah santa claus backstory is like a conquering viking <laughs> it's, it's rad. hey it's rad. This, well, hey this this came today 
Speaking of conquering Vikings. Ooh. Oh, go. wait. Let me make it solo. Yeah. You were going to say. How many pieces? You were going to say bigger. Uh, this is 2,100. <laughs> you were going to say bigger. I got to. I got to. And you did it. myself. I'll make it <laughs> bigger as way. Okay. Let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about James Gunn. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Speaking of incompetent <laughs> writers, <laughs> yeah. James Gunn's writing team, and, and it's, it's dead, 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 dead. All right. Dead, yeah. Dead, so, dead. I mean, like, James Gunn, pretty good. We're going to say he's pretty good. Drew Goddard's in yep. the writing room, pretty fucking mm -hmm. good. Pretty good. Yep. Everybody else sucks. Shit. Uh, we have the woman who wrote Birds of Prey. We have the man uh, responsible for trying to, uh, to, uh, get rid of cancel jay lee who wrote a bunch of shit comics about all of our favorite superheroes becoming cucks because he's a cuck tom king uh part of the uh defunct project uh the new gods that he was going to do with ava duvarnish and there's it's 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 not looking good so now we're finding out that people are coming back including james gunn's wife i'm get he didn't say that but all the projects she's involved with have been kept well so, so yeah, I was gonna say yeah. if you guys can help me out because I've heard pieces, but like, how how do you have a Peacemaker season two? How does that make sense? I don't know because the just because Zack Snyder's Justice League fucking shows up at the end of Peacekeeper uh, season one. Peacekeeper, Peacekeeper. Well, some of them do. Some of them do. Some of them turn up in CGI. Well, th but they so, yeah, but they're it, there. Yeah. Unless the first scene of season two is they all jump into a portal and end up in a completely different dimension. I don't understand how this can have continuity. Um, because the Flash um, made everything wibbly wobbly. Right. But it doesn't that's as good as you. That's as good as you're ever going to get. James, I promise you. James Gunn came out and said nothing is canon until Creature uh, Commandos, an, an animated series. That's going to that, that's technically going to launch. Uh, this DC reboot, um, which I believe is fucking dead. And I think oh. the best you can hope for is maybe we get a good Superman movie that people will walk out of, kind of like uh, the creator. People walk out of it, and some people will like it. Some people go, it's all right. It's okay. I haven't seen it. I've heard mix, I've heard it's a mixed bag, but it flopped. Right. It fucking flopped. So uh, I think that's probably what could happen like uh it'll be a superman movie that will be pretty well received that won't hit a billion dollars which it needs to by the way it needs to hit a billion they've set the bar we didn't set the bar they've set the bar um and i think that's where it goes and by the time it comes out like people will be so done with superheroes because each shitty superhero project that am. marvel and dc has to obligatory has to be like an obligatory release damages your brand Damages your overall brand to the normies. Are normies watching Ahsoka? No, they're not. It's Rebels fans. It's just I don't the even Rebels think, fans. Can, can normal... I, I don't mean this to be offensive like at all to, to people like Clone Wars or Rebels, but you guys must understand, anybody who hasn't seen those shows, Ahsoka is fucking worthless. Like... I don't hmm. even... I've been watching it with one of my friends who hasn't doesn't even know who Ahsoka is. But yeah. no, it's obviously about the six movies, including the sequels as well. Then that they'd be like, I don't understand. Like the, Anakin's apprentice, when 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 was that ever a thing? What the fuck's going on? And it's just like, well, yeah, and I, and and they don't do enough to develop it on its own. So the idea that people are going to care about this when people are struggling to care about a whole film about Han Solo, do you really think that this was going to work ever? Like I, I'm willing to bet that the um, the Anakin stuff is pretty much the only thing that the the show's getting like attention for. Yep, and that's about well, it. Clearly, it's because of the popularity of Episode Five. So you, you have to know that's gonna the other episode. So let's look at this from an outsider to to hook in just your core fan base. You had to bring back a character who's dead, who you just brought back a year ago, whose story has ended and cannot move forward. To get people interested into these new characters that people previously cared about and not everybody is on board. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Rebel episodes got better ratings than Ahsoka. It wouldn't shock I mean, me at all. Uh, yeah. Probably probably did. Probably did. Probably did. No, and legitimately probably did. Yeah. So, DC... First, first act for James Gunn's first act, whether it's whether it's real or not, this is what it's perceived was firing Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. Correct. He, he fucked himself. 
that day. That day. Well, I, I think it goes a little bit <clears throat> slightly beyond no, that. It, it does, but perception-wise, you can go right back to that. You can go if, right back Gun, to that. If Gunn had stuck to his guns, no pun intended, if James had stuck to his guns uh, <laughs> and just revamped everything in the same manner that he claimed he was going to revamp sure, sure. Superman, then at least people could understand the vision. But when you start keeping your wife employed through Peacemaker and have Amanda Waller and, and have potentially Ezra Miller and then have... As uh, I completely agree. And if my aunt had nuts, she'd be my fucking uncle, okay? True. No, exactly. James Gunn did what he did, and he did it to preserve his... If his he cannot bring back his wife. He, a girlfriend, whatever the fuck she is. He can't bring her back. Hey, well, girlfriend, girlfriend. But yeah. yeah, but uh, Viola Davis, uh, I'm I'm fine them keeping her. She's she's good in the role as Amanda Waller, but it's got to be a completely different Amanda Waller. Like, you're yes. starting over with Amanda Waller. But bring him back the fucking John... I'm so, so, so sorry. So, so sorry. Sorry. Sorry, China. Can I suck your dick, China? Uh, Xena as... BRB. Xena. Fucking Xena as a Peacemaker as, it makes no fucking sense. Although he was fine in the role in the movie, the, I fucking hated the series. I didn't just not like it. I hated it. I stopped watching I, it. I yeah, didn't yeah, like it. I thought it was woke fucking shit. So, um, uh, yeah, it makes no... Fu and then they're bringing back um, Blue Beetle. But if, again, if if they start with him over, it's still bad because you put him in the shitty movie. I'm fine with him playing Jaime Reyes. I am, but now, but he's already been in the shitty movie, which means are you going to bring back George Lopez? Is Batman still going to be Batman's a fascist? Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's just Zolo. It's just Solo. Sholo. Sholo. They should have just shit canned oh, the movie my. and gave him another shot because I think the, the actor's fine. I think he's fine. He's got a lot what of personality to him. He does. He's uh, good in Cobra Kai. I like him. So. Considering it fucked up in terms of like it flopped and everything, is it is it too unrealistic to just release it after the relaunch and just say it's a part of the new continuity? I would say I would release it on fucking on Max as part of a, a um, Elseworlds. You just put an Elseworlds. Yeah. fucking label on your HBO Max and that's where you release Joker, the Batman and all this other shit and it would have been fine. I mean, a D, the, right. the core DC fan base understands that, understands Elseworlds. Uh, and it, and it's... This? Hmm? Whoa. Oh, I got King Shark down here. <laughs> I got King Shark I gotta open up uh, that I haven't opened up. Nice. Uh, By the I, way, because of Deet Wright, folks. Hey, does he follow you on Twitter? Of, uh, on another account that got banned. Oh. Um, so, no, he doesn't while well, he follows me. Because Warner Brothers uh, have why. got a mandate about guns, Peacemaker's 9 mil is glued to his holster. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, you I'm cannot I take his 9 mil out. Glad I didn't buy it. It's going back in the box. Seal the box. And sell it or return it. <laughs> yes. Fuck that. That's fucking lame. Uh, you know what's that, that's why that's why you get the knockoff. Uh, because you get the guns with all the other stuff. And do you know what McFarlane's been doing? What? Because he's because he, he's been like you know doing the McFarlane DC stuff and he can't put guns with it. He's just uh <clears throat> he's just releasing separate gun packs. Good. Which are the weapons for the characters, which he's not allowed to put in the things. Just, it's just a weapon pack. Good lad. <sighs> it's it's so dumb uh, what what DC and Marvel have become. And and again, there's no reason you can't have guns in a comic, and your fucking adult toy can't have a fucking gun. It's unwillingness, and this unwillingness is why they're losing billions of dollars, and nobody gives a fuck about their brand well, we, anymore. We pretend like kids. Just, they don't care if you have like a little toy gun. So you don't Dude, have to, I like... had toy guns that looked like <laughs> guns, like real ones that did get some people shot, but not many. That's just life. It sucks. They didn't have little orange tips on it, Mahler. They looked like real fucking guns. <laughs> That's how old I am, though. Well, they're actually they were flintlock pistols when they were just inventing them. That's all. <laughs> <I am. laughs> hey, hey. The one time I got busted, 
uh, I, I got got the like, well, not the one time, but the first time I got the shit beat out of me by a <laughs> by a cop. Um, at Disneyland, they sold replica flintlock pistols that looked pretty fucking real. At uh, right outside of Pirates of the Caribbean, at the gift shop, old some olds will remember that with me. I had it laying on the floor. Cop saw it, pulled me out, and gave me some flashlight therapy. That, that's getting beat up by a flashlight, by the way. I figure, yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Oh, uh, but just... Uh, I, th I I just think... Would, I mean, I am personally, but I after all this... Marvel have killed heroes. They've, they've killed... Yes, yes, you can get a once in a blue moon. But you notice that the, the films that have been mostly successful have been either one-offs or part of... A series of successful films like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 ended up being successful, but it did start off with a terrible opening weekend because of Marvel, Marvel fatigue, D Disney fatigue. And then it people, people I thought it was very mid myself, but a lot of people did enjoy it and it did have good legs. Joker was successful. But, sorry, real quick, it didn't mm. make that much money. Go on, it didn't make as much as the second. No, it didn't. Well, no, pro profitability. Like it did. Profitability. It's uh, it costs more too, so it didn't make yeah, yeah, make yeah, as yeah. much money. Sorry, go on. Uh, but you know, Joker obviously was uh, a script that was repurposed that wasn't a Joker script. Uh, but uh, it, it was it was repurposed to to be one, uh, and that worked, and it worked perfectly for the character. Other than that, you know, uh, other than that. Mike Mignola, A Angel Cole. Aquaman. Cover. Mike Mignola is amazing. Mike Mignola. Uh, Aquaman, because women wanted to see buff uh, Jason Samosa. <laughs> Mimosa. <laughs> S Samosa, yes. And uh, I don't. Sam yeah, Samosa. And uh, I don't know where you see your next big film from because the Batman didn't do great. Batman did 775, 775. Yep. Yep. They were looking for a billion. definitely a billion with that. Yep. Definitely a billion. But it kind of almost put into question the sequel. And it looks like the Batman 2 is gonna be it. Yeah. For that for that side of it. Yep. So where so so you think James Gunn, who's got Tom King, that a destroyed Batman, and he's do you reckon Tom King's gonna have a say in the Batman stuff? I reckon he will. You've got Christina Hodgson, whatever, who wrote Bumblebee, which was, I thought, a decent, good film. But then she also wrote Birds of Prey, which flopped massively. The Flash movie, which flopped massively. And Batgirl, which got canned and didn't even get fucking released. She's part of your fucking team? You need people, as Mark Millar said, you need people that know what they're doing. You need you need veterans. You need people who can who know comics, know or in this case, you know, superhero superheroes who know what people want, who understand that you put the character ahead of anything else. Yep. And and I don't see that. I mean, I'm sort of nervous for a James Gunn Penn Superman film. Yeah, I I, I don't, don't think, think James Gunn's the right writer for I don't Superman. Think he's, he's been. I, yeah, he's he's. He's good for niche characters. Uh, yes. I, I would feel the same way if Joss Whedon was writing a Superman in his prime. I'd say he's the wrong guy for it. Yeah. I would be I interested in that, a I'd be interested in a James Gunn, Ted Cord, Blue Beetle, and a Booster Gold film or, or TV series. I'd be interested in that because of the quirky nature of those characters. Bring in Fire and Ice. You have Fire, Fire and Ice, Blue Beetle, and Booster Gold could be a hell of a fucking great, great series. But Superman, nah. I don't, I don't see it. I, I, it's too, too mainstream. I think for uh, for Gun, this guy comes from trauma for Christ's sake. Yeah, yeah. He comes. He he's always been like a, an uh, a counterculture alternative guy, which doesn't mean you can't write Superman. But it just doesn't seem like he's ever been interested in characters like Superman. Mm. There's always got to be some 
abuse in the background or anything like that. Superman is a, is you know an adopted alien on this planet and uh, pretty much good personified. Doesn't mean he doesn't have flaws, but the man has to hold back. You know, Superman has to show restraint all the time. There's so much you could do with Superman that so many writers have said, I don't know what to do with Superman because they're not talented enough. They're just well, not. We already got Brightburn, which I think is getting a sequel or something now as well. Have you guys oh. seen that? No, I nearly, I nearly put it on the other night, actually. I thought it was pretty bad, and it, it, was, oh. it didn't go much further than what if Superman was evil, which bores the hell out of me these days. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's such a tired it's, trope. Yeah, it's it's so boring now. We've seen, you know, we've seen Homelander, we've seen Injustice, we've seen the just, uh, Zack Snyder's stuff. You know, it, it, it's... it's uh, and, he, and Gary, and Gary. Authority. Authority. That, that's why he announced it as his second movie, because that's where he's comfortable. Like, Creature Commandos would probably be pretty cool under James Gunn. No mm. problem there. No problem there. Um, but, uh, yeah, Authority is your second movie when your second movie should be about Batman and your third movie should be about Wonder Woman. But the, your first movie, without any other movies being planned, should be about Superman and Superman's world and building that world and not bringing in an out of order Green Lantern, uh, not bringing in an out of order fucking uh, Robin in a Batman Robin. movie. Mm. It's like you're jumping you're jumping into 2010. That's what they're doing. They're jumping into 2010, which is probably when James Gunn probably read some Morrison and some Millar stuff and Warren Ellis because those are guys his speed. But did he read J Dan Jurgens' Superman? Oh, he should. He should be he should be nothing against my boy up. Mark Millar. I love Mark Millar, but Dan Jurgens' Superman is the best Superman. Is, is the best Superman ever. Best Superman ever. Dan Jurgens. He that, even came back for for Rebirth. And was fucking awesome. And, and was insanely After good. After Convergence, then yeah. Bendis came and fucked it all up. Uh, Bendis came. Came Bendis all over. Bendis came. Yeah, Bendis Superman's is coming. face. Man, Bendis is coming, Gary. Remember? He's coming all over that's, fucking... That's another guy. Ben, and, and he proved it. That's another guy who can't write Superman. Did Bendis could, could write Daredevil. He could, you know, oh. write indie uh, street characters. Could not write fucking Superman. You, you have to be talented. You know, you know who did write Superman? Like him or not? Alan Moore did a very good Superman. Two-part issue. Alan Moore knew how to write Superman. And the real Superman. So, yeah, it, it's you just need to be talented. You know who's damn good at it, too? John Byrne. John Byrne was fucking damn Jerry good. Ordwell. Yep. Uh, Ordway, not Ordwell. Ordway, sorry. But uh, yes, Jerry Ordway, he, he was a great, uh, he was great super. But no, none of them, none of them, I, 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 I'll quite happily say this, none of them to me hold a torch to Dan Jurgens. None of them. Nope. He's, to me, he's the absolute quintessential Superman writer. And if they had any fucking brains about them whatsoever they would have approached Dan Jurgens to write the Superman film <clears throat> Jerry Rubenstein yeah 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 yeah. great stuff Rubenstein walked into my store one day we had a nice long talk uh, but that's that's what that's what they should have done yeah me. yeah Ho I hope they're reading a lot of that but uh, I don't they won't be no <laughs> Dude, Aaron sent me some fucking unbelievable. Like, look at this shit. Woo. Oof. Nice. Uh, Negative. Eh. Remember this guy? He used to carry guns. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I see. I see. He's doing a Christmas movie though called Silent Night. Silent Night. Yeah. He's out of costume for some reason, but I'm okay with it. You know, I'll take that. Yeah, it's fine. It's it's like the the um Dolph Lundgren Punisher. So which I like. I like all the versions of the Pl Punisher movie. The Plumisher. The Plumisher. The Plumisher. The, pl plumisher. the plumisher. plumisher. I need a Plumisher. You're gonna <laughs> fuck up those pipes. Yeah. Well, I need them to unblock it. Block a block a pipe. Yep. Oh, look at this. Same. Yeah, so you do, you get gun, gun is all over the place in his in his decision making process with his his universe. 
Ah, oh, beautiful. That, that's leading up very close to nightfall. That is very Sam, close that is to Sam Keith. Sam Keith and yeah. Kelly Jones. They're such great artists. Hi, Kelly. Kelly's out there. I know Kelly's out there. He's going to be on Friday Night Tight soon. Yippee! Yeah, baby! Uh, no, I, I think it's a complete disaster. So he did announce again to, re, like, uh, uh, Blue Beetle. The kid, I can never pronounce his name, and I don't care. Sholo. Me, me. Um... <laughs> Yeah, Miguel from Cobra Kai. Uh, I like to Viola say. Davis, the Woman King, is returning uh, as <laughs> the Woman King's returning as Amanda Waller, and John, I'm gonna suck some CCP cock. Cena is gonna return as the Peacemaker. Zena, you don't you mean? John Zena. <laughs> is there is there any I saw confusion at all? Like it's just like yeah, it's whatever James Gunn wanted. He wants to keep his yep. his preferred lads. And there's, he no, can, there's no system to it. And he wants to keep his preferred partner obviously and, yeah and as bounding in the comics put it it killed aquaman 2 in its cradle not that that one had very very much chance to live but aquaman 2 is going to be a fucking disaster i uh, it could be right now at this per present moment in time i think there's a possibility it does the same or worse than the flash well what's going to be funny is we're going to see two previously billion dollar films have massive fall-offs and we're going to get to see them compete because mm -hmm. aquaman is a was a billion dollar movie and captain marvel, marvel. was a billion dollar movie and we got the mar <laughs> the marvels is just around the corner uh i haven't checked i haven't checked uh, how, how's the film actors guild doing with their nor negotiations uh let me check real quick Oh, I almost typed film actors killed. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've uh, agreed to that it's an agreement in principle, isn't it? But it, it still doesn't look like they're going to get back to work or mo or it's going to kick in. No, the right, the, year, actors, really. the actors, oh, the actors. The actors. Oh, the yeah. actors. Uh, they reckon by the end of this week, don't they? Yeah. So, yeah, the, uh, the writers are already back to work. Like some of them are back to work, which is sad to say. Uh, SAG, uh, the Film Actors Guild meets for a second day, continues negotiations through Wednesday. The parties met for a full day of bargaining on Monday with I'm top perfect. Hollywood leaders, including Bobby Iger, the weatherman, and Donna Langley present. Uh, the Performers Union and Alliance, uh, don't want to be replaced by AI, had a full day of bargaining session. Some of the industry's biggest leaders, we already knew about that. Uh, when negotiations initially broke off in July 12th, you noticed that the producers let, they didn't talk for months. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because they, they wanted the contracts to, to expire. Force majeure kicked in in early August Yeah, with a lot of contracts, with the writers. I, I don't know necessarily how it goes with the actors, but with the writers. And uh, they got what they wanted. So the writers are coming back going, wow, it's so weird that we got this really good deal. Um yeah, the ones who are left got a good deal. That was the whole fucking point. As we, as some of us were saying, from the first day they walked out, it was, uh, they walked into the, so they're at their, their union in Sherman Oaks, lovely Sherman Oak, California. Formerly lovely, everything down there's a fucking hellhole. Uh, still, Monday's round of negotiations occurred more than 80 days into the actor strike as the Film Actors Guild still have many outstanding issues to resolve. Wage increases, a revenue sharing proposal on streaming titles and regulations for AI remain top priorities for the union that have yet to be fully addressed. The union has also pushed for an array of smaller items that is not yet settled by, with the studios like increases to health plan and pension contributions. Isn't the union supposed to handle that through dues? Uh, so, so what are you paying for now? Just... For somebody Protection. to represent you, so another, so you have an agent, you have a fucking union, and you still have to go over your fucking paperwork uh, to negotiate. Because unions back in the day, when when these were like steelworker unions and stuff, they they covered the health benefits and the pensions. Uh, caps the size of relocation expenses and whether performance capture work can be covered under the union's TV theatrical contract. In a separate message to members on Monday, the Film Actors Guild Negotiation Committee urged performers to not let up. The committee continued keep turning out in full force 
on the picket lines, even though many of you can't vote and none of you will ever work again. But keep, please help us. Please help the millionaires who show up about an hour a day, buy everybody some sandwiches and leave. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's not fair. They have some photographs taken and something done for their Instagram. Yeah, and they get like they bring water, you know. So you can okay. just leave that All out. Right. Right. That's that's awfully nice of them. Might the union like leaders it. also said that the group would remain on strike as long as it takes. Okay. Oh. So the strikes aren't Any over time. yet. <laughs> uh, well, let's get the super chats then. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's get the super chats. Uh, I have to think it might be my Ethernet cable. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check because because I'm on a Meta PC. There should be no fucking issues. None whatsoever. But we got some. But we got some. Hang on. You could talk as. Have you guys seen <laughs> Expendables 4? That was awful. No. Never see it. It's a fucking pathetic excuse for a movie. I feel like it was legally obligated. Because um, I'm not exactly saying the Expendables were high art, but holy shit. What a mess. I, uh, I thought the first Expendables was alright. Fun. Fun. Second, second one washed over me. So much so that I didn't even care to watch the third one. And by the time this one was announced, I really didn't even give a shit. So I didn't even know there was one. They didn't do a no, very good four. job of selling it, but like I said, I feel like it was made for any other reason than storytelling. Did you send an, a, a link? Oh, oh yes. Sorry. I apologize. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, woman. Yeah, uh, Expendables. Uh, no, I'm not going to watch Expendables 4 that I heard is a base, bait and switch with Without any Sylvester Stallone in it, or barely, he's barely in it. He's yeah, barely, is, yeah. isn't it? Um, Statham, who's now the, yeah, Statham. The is, it's all about him, which is interesting. I think he needs Expendables. In give any me, way. give me Tulsa King season two. It's all I care about. Give me some Tulsa King season two. That fucking that was a good show. That was a good show. We've actually gotten some good shows over the last year. Not many, but yeah, uh, we'll say House of the Dragon. Um, mm -hmm. Terminalist, Reacher, Tulsa King, One Piece. All pretty Speaking of uh, fucking Kelly good Jones. shows. Kelly Jones' latest cover. For oh, that's beautiful. That's that beautiful. is delicious. Kelly, this is unreal. And right here, Gary, yep. at my fingertip. Got something that you'll probably like to see. Douche. Oh, yeah. Do you have the uh, absolute edition of that? No, I've only I, got the full part. But do you know how much that. that thing goes for now? No. Oof. A lot. Oof. Anywhere between really? five and a thousand, five hundred and a thousand, I think. Because they because it went way out of print. So it's it was it's a special edition that has original sketches from because remember they started that series way earlier and then finished it i think it's like five or six or seven years later maybe 10 years later correct me if i'm wrong chat so that got finished later uh gla versus avengers so there's an absolute edition that's got all the fucking i'll show you a picture of it ah. <clears throat> so it was weird that listing all those good shows you failed to mention the best show what's that i didn't about a farm oh clarkson's farm. farm clarkson's farm clarkson's farm you're right <laughs> Clarkson's Farm, which is uh, currently filming season three, almost done. They're going to go into season four. Uh, yeah, that contract's getting renewed. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> so, so. Wasn't so, it the biggest thing on Amazon Prime? Clarkson's Farm season three? Two? Season three? As season far two. as I'm aware, and it doesn't surprise me in the slightest. <clears throat> Just imagine Clarkson's Farm annihilated Rings of power. Um, Share that. Make sure all of it. What, what's the other one? What's the other one called? Wheel of Time. Ugh. All the stuff that nobody's watching. Oh my god! Oh wait, that's uh, issue three's cover from George Perez. And mine is remarked by George Perez, so he's got a little Superman 
on it. Oh, oh. so cool. Uh, I get, uh, it's freaking awesome. It's awesome. And, and you learn, like, uh, the DC Earth is a little bigger than Marvel's Earth. And that's that's the famous square off that Batman and Captain America have, and they just decide to stop fighting. They're all we're too evenly matched. We must work together. You know, it's it's rad. It, what are you, are you talking? Uh, are you talking about in this? Yeah, that's it's in JLA are you talking, Avengers. Are you talking, it's in JLA Avengers, uh, oh, not, not Marvel they, DC, they, not Marvel versus they, DC. Yeah, yeah, they 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 also uh, based off in amalgam. Um, in well, uh, yeah, uh, there's DC amalgam, versus, which is fucking with Dark Claw. That was fucking Dark Claw. awesome. Wolverine, awesome. Batman, yeah. Uh, but Batman just takes the uh, Captain America fight in uh, DC versus Marvel. DC versus but Marvel and JLA versus Avengers, they don't fight. <laughs> they yeah. St- they just go, we are too evenly matched. But they even say in the DC versus uh, Marvel, uh, Batman even says to Captain America, we could f- keep fighting. And we could fight do this all day. Dro- drops, yeah, until one of us drops of exhaustion. And then, uh, and then the uh, the sewer that they're fighting in, then the the water comes through, and Batman takes the advantage then, and saves Captain America and drowns. What do you guys think? Which one should win? Oh, that's tough. Um, you, you you know, there's the Captain you, whether it, whether or not you like it. If Batman knows the fight, who he's fighting, he he will come prepared. He will well, come so prepared. Yeah. As, as someone who's less familiar, I would have been like, well, Cap has an advantage in his uh, superhuman strength. stuff, of yep, course, sure. but Batman, like in all iterations, he's he's just, he's coming with way more gadgets, weaponry preparation and equipment. Okay, like, yeah. take it off Cap will have a shield, but will that be enough? It's like, probably not. Yeah. And I, this it, is a guy that will take Superman out prepared. Yeah. I mean, sure. Well, he took... Yeah, it feels like Batman would probably sure. take it. Uh, oh, I mean, if Superman just walked in and punched him in the face, then it's all over. Yeah. But, you know, we, we've had we've had all the stories. You know, we, we've had all the stories. And one of the great things about some of the Batman v Superman s- sort of conversations is is Batman does say to Superman, "If you wanted, if you wanted to kill me, I'd already be dead." So I know that you're already coming with the intent of trying not to kill me. So he he kind of also leverages that to an advantage. But uh, it was written, of course, that he took out the whole of the JLA a couple of times. Yeah. Spider-Man still wiped the floor with him. Spider-Man. I sense. feel like Spider-Man is harder I can't, I can't to beat see than Cap for Batman. Spider-Man. I can never see I can never see Batman winning against Wolverine. I can never see Well, that. they would just fight forever. Well, I mean, uh, I mean it, Batman it, would know you'd have to trap him or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that but but yeah, there, there wouldn't be a fatality well, there, or there was or, there was a battle between Punisher Wolverine that was f- Fucking great. <laughs> Wolverine ends up like a skeleton. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> that, see, how fucking cool would it have been to have gotten an R-rated live action of that that was like really good? Ugh. Oh, well. Different timelines. Uh, the thing that got me in, in um, DC versus Marvel was Storm beating Wonder Woman. I could never see that. They had Storm beat Wonder Woman? Mm-hmm. But that, that was... Uh, certain, yeah. certain fights okay, they okay. wrote themselves, but certain fights were, were voted, voted by They the were voted fan. on. They were voted right, on. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So, so was say, like, Superman, Hulk was voted did... on. Batman, Captain America was, was voted on. Storm, Wonder Woman was voted on. And Storm won the vote. Storm yes. won the vote, yeah. Well, dude, I wouldn't uh, have thought that would be the case. No, no. Oh. X-Men in the 90s were the most popular thing on the planet. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, but because, Superman I, won the vote over the Hulk, and uh, Batman won the vote over Captain America. How does it? How did it? Uh, do you remember how they did it? How did they it argue was, that Storm beat Wonder Woman? Uh, she she um, she got her with the lightning. She just kind of trapped her in a storm with the lightning, and then just kept thun- uh, raining down thunder uh, lightning bolts onto her until it mm-hmm. knocked her out. I guess so. Yeah, that's probably how you do it. Yeah, they they did a whole like DC versus Marvel. They did a versus game. They had the amalgamated universe, which was tons of fun. Uh, it was ridiculous, and you'll never see something like that again. You'll never see like corporate co- cooperation like that ever again. Mola, that's my name. Because I have brought all my comic collection back, I had actually bought you. <gasps> As well as the Nightfall stuff, though, which I sent, 
I actually bought you a hard back Batman hush. Ooh, trade paper okay, back. so send it to him. So I'm gonna, I'm and gonna I have send books that, you. that I lost in storage that I have to send him still because I, <laughs> I have the full Guardians of the Galaxy run that James Gunn basically ripped for the movie that he took full credit for, and it's like no. Nah. But your birthday present is shipping today from the state. On sweet, I hope he, I hope he gets there. First. Okay, Brent. Brent, was, is it your birthday? It Do you not want to talk about sixth. it? Of what? October. What? <laughs> the best month of the year. I like how you like calendar. It is. I got married this month. Mm. Yay! Twenty years, dude. Yay! Congrats, not bad at all. Ooh. Years. Well, you got... could do. You could kill somebody and be out before then. Well, I was gonna say we <laughs> ain't got there yet, so let's let's not count our <laughs> let's not count our chicken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could piss that woman off pretty easily. I found new and interesting ways to do that a lot. Uh, Brent Wolf. <laughs> oh, has... you were you you guys were you were when you were over here when I was with you guys. I saw a couple that was deeply in love. Oh, super gay. It is, but you were. Honestly, Melissa you guys was doting over gay. Come on. Melissa was doting over him. Uh, Gary was doting over her. It was lovely to see. It was lovely to see. Yeah, I like her. I like her. Oh. <laughs> I just like her. <laughs> she's a kid. Oh, you, no, you know why she's the best wife in the world? You know why I went? Because uh, she's funny. She likes a lot of the same stuff I do. Although she like her taste in TV shows and movies is pretty fucking awful. But it's helped refine <laughs> me to female. like find out what's good. Yeah, she's a female. She like if it, there's people crying and some woman, if some guy mm -hmm. is abusing his wife for like two hours and then he dies at the end, she likes it. Uh, <laughs> if if it's a foreign <laughs> film where both couple dies, at, if somebody has to die at the end for her to like it. It has to be incredibly sad and depressing for her to like it. Like two people sitting at a table talking about how horrible their lives are is her kind of jam. But occasionally, she likes something cool like Buffy. She got me into Buffy. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah, she likes a bunch of, like, really cool stuff. But the, the just the recent best thing is I have this giant Return of the King banner, right? Theater banner. It's like a... Uh, three foot by nine foot wide or something like that. And I'm, I was just going to put it on the ceiling in here. And she's all, no, no, you should put it in the living room. <gasps> I love you Keep so much. Her. That's how you knew. Nice. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read some soups. Get off this gay stuff. Um... <laughs> Good. <laughs> so long, gay boys. <laughs> uh, Brent Wolf has donated $50. That's it. Just dropped a 50 and said, see ya. Oh. He stuck it in our underwear and walked away. Sweet. Hey. Next time I promise to wear underwear. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as, as a young queer girl, <laughs> I'm going to read the super chat. <laughs> 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 Noah Sprague Studios for $20 says, Exode Goo, I bring you some grave news. As a sci-fi book series that originates from your home country, China, the three-body problem is getting a Netflix directed by and written by Dan and Dave from Game of Thrones, and they have already gender-swapped the main character. And you know how much they got? Just to get him in the building. This isn't the, them getting paid for the show. Just to get him in the building, $25 million. Oh, wow. Why don't you just oh. piss that money down? Or throw it, just burn it. Honestly, it would have been, it would have kept somebody warm. Yeah. I totally agree. Uh, the three, uh, the three body problem. Is it like Chinese propaganda? Is it a good book series chat? Is it something? I've never even I've heard good of things it. about it. Yeah, I, I have too, but um, you never know. I could have heard good things, like especially the the fantasy book community, the one that gets their their books published, uh, the one that was pretty much curated by people like George R. R. Martin, who now want to cancel him for for mispronouncing their fucking names. Are fucking <laughs> are the worst, most woke <laughs> piece of shit community out there. Like worse than comics, worse than games, worse than fucking Hollywood worse than anything is the sci-fi and fantasy book community that 
specifically sucks the dick of major publishers. They're fucking terrible. <laughs> sad puppy. Look into the sad puppy thing. And these are all people George R. Martin helped get gigs, cultivated, not all, but a lot of them. And then when he gives them awards, they go, I denounce this white supremacist for... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, the Asian lass. The Asian lass, yeah. Yeah, fucking hell. What an ungrateful cut person. Yep. Uh, drunken <laughs> Finn for 50 British pounds. <laughs> Proper money. <laughs> Hi, Az. Hi. Have you seen Sisu yet? No, uh, but I think it's gone up on uh, streaming. It is. It's a good. Yeah, so it, I, I will see it soon. I will see it it's soon. It's 90 probably. minutes. It's great. It's fucking great. Uh, also, the type of knife the main guy uses is called a Sammy knife. It is used for everything related butchering. I don't know if you can get them to the US, but they are made here in Finland and I think also in Sweden. You can get them here. Yeah. Dude, we have guns. <laughs> yeah. We have crazy guns. As much as the uh, the uh, Democrats try to stop it in major cities, we have we have fucking like fifty cal. Like we got guns, we're we're okay. They ain't gonna take our guns away from us. They're not. They can try, but that ain't happening. It's kind of a deal breaker here in America. Nozaku boy for fifty dollars on the stream outside. <laughs> Who sees into the hearts of men? And the undergarments of women, Peeping Tom, a vicious succubus with too much junk in the trunk, has twerked into, <laughs> twerked into town to suck on the young, li on the young lady's souls through their southern holes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ken Tom. <laughs> their southern holes. I'm broken. <laughs> it's descriptive detail yeah. i mean yeah i mean you know southern, you know southern holes <laughs> you know if this is north there's two holes down south he did say plural he said holes oh they did <laughs> a two for one <laughs> Can Tom Can Tom clap the ATM acolyte ass sucker? Hey. <laughs> Final episode tonight. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Hashtag Tano Tuesday. Hashtag it's Tano Tuesday. Oh my god! <laughs> Tano Tuesday. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Presenting my taco brothers and sisters. Let's talk about it. Let's talk Let's about why white tano. people what white people not being able to make tacos according to some fucking shit idiot on Twitter. Uh, I, I'm what? sure that's just a troll. It has to be trying to just uh, uh, white people stop making brown and black people's food. All right, stop making hamburgers. Yeah, guys, then. stop <clears throat> eating sushi and Chinese food then. <laughs> it just well, makes no uh, sense. <laughs> I know, I know. This is it. This is why you just don't don't engage fucking retarded people. Well, yeah, uh, the Twitter engagement thing is getting a bit much. I even I did a joke tweet the other day, like, uh, "What '80s comedy would you see with the resurrected David Bowie while riding a giraffe at a drive-in?" And people answered, and I'm like, and I even put a gif of farming on the bottom, and I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, it's getting yeah, a 20, bit. 20, it's, it, oh, it's, it's a it's a dump at the I've, minute. Yeah, I've been seeing a serious increase in like the the posts of like, what opinion gets you like this? What opinion on blah 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 gets you like this? What is it's like all of you are just farming. None of you are actually doing yeah, anything but just discussing farming shit. for monetization. That's yeah. it. Hey, it's is, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a Trample is this a soccer right team? West Ham United Football Club. I thought it said Woofuck. <laughs> Woofuck. Woofuck. Sorry, Woofuck Football Club. <clears throat> yeah, West Ham United. Yeah. Okay. Hey, somebody gave me this and said that's my favorite soccer team now. Uh, they're doing okay. They're seventh in the league at the minute. 
That doesn't sound okay. okay. That sounds fucking terrible. Out of how many? Uh, 20. Oh. Yeah, that's but it's bad. West Ham. It's West Ham and it's the Premier League. So that's, that's like a wild card. That's like a wild card, like a lower wild card in baseball and in football. It's that's like not how it works, Eric. I, I don't. <laughs> oh, how does it work? The complicated game of kicking a ball that you're not allowed to touch. Well, only one. It's a league, so only one team wins the league. The top four it, go into the Champions League, which is a European-based league. So it's like the a conference. Place then goes into the European League. So it's like a division and a conference winning it. Yeah, I think I understand the basic element of sports, except for kicking around a ball that you can't touch. Called goalkeeper soccer. can. Called soccer. Yes, the goalkeeper. I played goalkeeper. I played the, I played the stupid sport, dude. When it was called Liar. soccer, oh. I did. I did. Don't believe for a second. All you through my childhood, I was ball. a goalie. I was a goalie. Mm. Me too. And then in halftime, we'd go have little no. orange. We'd have like Capri Suns. Playing with balls, X-ray gill doesn't mean you're a goalie. We'd have a well, a juice box or Capri Suns. I have Sun, to defend the goal. And we'd have an orange slice. The ball. And then we'd go back <laughs> out there. Do we want a championship one year? I am a goalie. Gary, nobody gives a fuck. You're, <laughs> there's no goalie for, for X-ray girl. <laughs> We're goalie is Mark, about actually. Goals and fucking genitals now. Well, whatever. <laughs> Hale, has everyone seen the new Babylon 5 movie? Asked the abominable Fibes for $20. I have not, but I uh, I own it. I do own it. But I actually want to. It's the animated one. It's the animated one. I want to rewatch Babylon 5 mm. before I watch it. And and I usually end up now watching because as and I well I watched it for the first time was it your first time as two mm -hmm. when we rewatched it or when we watched it like two three years ago and now I watch it like around the holidays every year because it's fucking great so I I own it I bought it but I haven't seen it yet a William Carson for twenty seven ninety nine that's Canadian pesos hail from Prince Edward Island. I watched Lawrence of Arabia the other night. What a contrast between what directors used to do in practical effects and uh, and beautiful landscapes and the Hasbro plastic looking CGI they now have. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you're going to spend $200 million on a series, you do it like One Piece where you build a bunch of huge fucking sets and cities. And, yeah, there's a little green screen, but most of that shit is practical. Instead of spending the same amount of money on CGI that looks dog shit. And RTD even came out and said, like, uh, you know, we were sold that CGI was supposed to be cheaper and faster. And it's slower yeah. and more expensive now. Mm -hmm. It's just, just like digital was meant to be cheaper. Digital games, digital movies. Yep. And uh, I told you, I sent a message to you today. I got, a, I got an email from Amazon. Oh, yeah. Saying, we are giving you credit amazon credit for superman the donner's cut which you bought digitally digitally because we're no longer going to be able to play it on prime is it by uh, uh, physical media physical physical media physical media people. yes i have three versions mm -hmm. of the donner cut if I got you, the um you got the, the 4k big, box set if you get the 4k box set it's mm -hmm. in there get it there but i mean yeah uh, that needs to be preserved because it is the superior version of Superman 2. Uh, it, it, phenomenal. It's way better than theatrical. Way better. Yeah. The Richard Lester, who you direct, who directed the Beatles films. Uh, you know, yeah, too goofy. Uh, Ace 18158921001 for $20. Gary, two things. One, fact is you haven't realized that Kathleen Kennedy was also feeding girls to Weinstein, hence... Why Hedlund got her job uh, is funny. Hedlund definitely got off on those pretty girls. It was revenge for her. Um, yeah, I, I, a lot of people were friends with uh, Harvey Weinstein, and a lot of people knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, is Kathleen Kennedy one of those people? Sure. Probably. Don't don't know for a fact, but sure. Wouldn't be surprised at all. They're very insular. I mean, like, let's put it this way. There's a picture, not that it has anything to do with anything but uh steven spielberg hosted uh tom hanks uh and the obamas on his uh 250 million dollar yacht in the mediterranean in italy the last couple of days but there's no they're just friends there's no 
coordinated effort that was started by the Obama administration, even though all this crazy woke shit started coming in heavily towards the end of his administration. And a lot of people who work for his administration now work in Hollywood. It's all a coincidence, total coincidence. It's not fortification. It's not forced behavior. Nutcase for 20 British pounds. Rianne Johnson was the knife that stabbed Star Wars and Filoni was the poison that finished the job. Spaceballs is better than Disney Star Wars. You're right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, Rebel Moon, which is basic bitch Zack Snyder, girl who's the key to everything, will probably be better than Disney Star Wars. Probably. Probably. Um, but it could suck too. It, it, yeah, it, it could be it could be good. It could also suck massive balls. Well, um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see because if 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 it sucks as bad as uh, blurry of the fucking dead did, um, then we'll know that Zack Snyder definitely needs a good writer producers who keep him reined in and a major studio who keeps him reined in because Netflix kind of let him do what he wanted. So there ain't nobody to blame. There ain't no Warner brothers to blame. There's nobody to blame. They let him do what he wants in uh, blurry of the dead. I couldn't fucking see anything. That's why I call it blurry of the dead. I thought that just was his name. Uh, oh, right. mm. yeah. I'm super bummed. Didn't know the show was starting so super early. I haven't completely missed. Uh, I've completely missed the first hour and a half. Tricky. Sorry. I put up a thing like uh, an hour before on the community section. Well, I, <clears throat> I mean, other people could have done it, but I did it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We do. It was kind of a last minute decision. It's all Mahler's fault. Let's just play. It Mahler. is all my fault. It is all your fault. No. I actually like it starting at this time. I think we should move it to this time, but that's me. Ian Soforth has gifted 10 neurotic memberships for $50. <laughs> Lord Baratheon. Lord Baratheon. Stannis should be the king of the seven kingdoms, by the way. So I don't know which Lord Baratheon you're talking about. Uh, for $49.99, thoughts on the Loki season two reviews? Uh, well... The ones I have seen, which are non-spoiler, which are good, have uh, the shills are like, I really like it. I think it's really good. If you liked Loki season one, then you'll like Loki season two. If you didn't like Loki season one, <clears throat> then you won't like Loki season two. If you don't like time travel, you won't like Loki season two. So it sounds like I'm not going to like season two because I fucking hated Loki season one. Mahler, you loved famously Loki season one. Yeah, it wasn't literally the, the thing that we chose that ended all of the MCU instead of, uh, you know, boosting it as everyone liked to think. It was right before Black Widow came out, right? And it was like, well, we're fucked now with all the things they did in the Loki show. So yeah, it's nice to see a season two to a season one that destroyed the entire franchise it was a part of. It's going to be fantastic. And I think the least damage you could possibly do is just to be have nothing happen, which by the sounds of it will probably be the case anyway. Which sounds? They've already introduced TVA and Kang. They've destroyed everything. So what we're going to do, probably have shenanigans running around, blah, blah, blah. And Loki saying, I need to save my friends. And uh, I've heard Jonathan Majors sucks in it. Ooh. Not just isn't like isn't good. He sucks at it. Like he he tries different takes on his characters, right? So he's Victor mm. Timely. Uh, and apparently it's just cringe. It's like pretty bad. But of course the shields are like, oh, it's fine. Uh Sylvie gets kind of stuck in one place and she regrets her decision that Loki tried to talk her out of. And, and she's going to become, uh, w w this is just a prediction on my part, because she's a woman, and it's the MCU. Even though she caused all this shit, she will be the moral, moral superior character by the end of this. Over Loki, over M Mobius. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I think it's going to really suck. And, and uh, as many have pointed out, this is going to be a barometer. We will see uh, how what people think of this um of this show and uh, of the overall marvel cinematic universe loki was one of the most watched ones according to disney of course and i think it uh, will 
I think people, I think half the crowd is going to dip out easily. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're speaking my language. Sorry, it's off camera. I'm my love language. You're delivering me coffee. Thank you. Oh. Hail, Mrs. Neurotic. <laughs> Woo! All right. So I, I think it, I think it loses uh, half its audience. That's just the. I could be wrong. What do you think, As? Are you super excited for Loki season two? Or are you counting the days till Thursday? No, I, I hate you. Thank you. Because <laughs> I I wouldn't have watched this if you if this wasn't another. Gotta watch it for Friday night tights thing. I could be the kind of guy who uh meticulously micromanages every live stream where we have to talk about certain topics for a specific amount of time and then we have to stop while I get the last word and uh make you watch everything. I think well, I, make, I, I hope I make you, you have fun with Friday things. night tights going forward. <laughs> But I just make you watch. Good like, luck with good luck with your show. I wish you all the success in the world. But I make you watch like seven things a year, dude. That's dude, a high estimate. Seven, seven things this month. Okay, it's busy time. It's the holidays. This is our busy uh -huh. time. We just had our slow period. This was it. It's Late just, summer is the slow I period. Hate, I hate. Look, I'm just watching. I've just watched Robin Hood. I've just watched Ahsoka. <laughs> okay, you did, I like, didn't make gonna, you watch I Robin. Hate did I make you no, watch okay, Robin okay, Hood? No, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's just use Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. and, and and then I've got to go, and I hate fucking Loki season one. I hated it. And i got to watch season fucking two with Sylvie, the fucking dumb bin. As? Savior. Well, You're amazing. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate shows that have to tell you they're amazing. Now Mahler's going to watch it. Of course he's going to watch rings it. around them. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. I was going to say, you undersold how cringe it was, Gary, by saying you're amazing in a normal way. Uh, <laughs> I know, I did. Uh, Sorry. Uh, even though she had never displayed anything that showed that she's amazing at you all. Know, you know what we learned? Um, Loki's bi. Well, maybe in season two we'll get a scene where someone says, like, Loki, how are we to save your friends? And then you'll say, you know, when I was a young queer boy... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't see how this is relevant. It's like, uh, give me a sec, give me a sec. It, it, okay. it goes somewhere. It goes somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, our thoughts on Loki season two, very pessimistic. Uh, I, uh, yeah, not, not, uh, not overly excited. Not overexcited, but it's part of the job. Um, and after watching uh, something as great as One Piece, I know, well, we'll get something that good again maybe in 10 years. <laughs> Fuck if I know. Uh, don't even know if season two will be good. It's fucking Netflix we're talking about. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> so I just enjoyed the good thing for as long as I could. And, uh, now it's back to, uh, shit. But at least we got Silent Night coming out December 1st. That looks pretty, that looks like, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. I am, I am mm -hmm. legit looking forward to that. Yep. I am, will, I will be there day one. Do you think Dune 2, do you think Dune, do you think they're wishing, God, we shouldn't have delayed Dune? Probably, yes. Yeah. Probably. I think, I think it was a knee-jerk reaction. Myself. I think it was knee-jerk and dumb uh, to move it from from April to uh, from from like holiday season to April. Well, it's funny because that decision made a lot of us assume the writer's strike was expected to go until next year. Yep. Mm. Like, why else would you yeah. do it? And it's like, well, they fucked up. That's why. But it was all done. It was done, dusted in the can, post done. Yeah. And you don't need actors going on stupid Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, have no. one of your fucking actors go on the critical, go on fucking Oprah Bar or Critical Drinker or something like that, that or, or Friday Night Tights. They'll get more fucking views. More respect, too. Hmm. Although I probably wouldn't have an actor on Friday Night Tights, but that's me. That's and me. And yet you have the, the amazing as one of the most famous New Zealand actors of all time. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, there's creatives re reaching out to as right now, desperate to talk to him. Desperate. Desperate. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna have a talk off camera. We're gonna have a private chat next week. That's good. That's where I keep all my conversation off camera. So I'm not gonna do some f fucking dog and pony show, stupid live stream thing. Uh, mm. it it'd be boring as fuck. I, I I have a feeling. I think this is gonna be a very brief conversation. I think so too. 
Hey, um, I uh, I noticed that Jay Longbone put the entire Robin Hood, or, or she posted that they put the entire Robin Hood theme on. Uh, oh yeah, on YouTube. Did you see the views? I didn't see the views. I just said like every time I hear that song, I have a sudden urge to loot a target. So uh, <laughs> I think uh, it had been up for three days. I don't think it was like an official account or anything. Yeah, but the the song had uh, it was less than a thousand views, dude. When I looked for Robin Hood series, because that was the hashtag oh. they were using on the day it came out as, and I wanted to see like how many people were actually talking about it. The tweet thread when I put in Robin Hood series on the day it came out, four tweets. 424 views. Do you know where Robin Hood ended on the night? Uh, it charted. It charted. Okay. In Canada, by the way. In Canada. In Canada yeah. In Canada. It charted in Canada. You know, uh-huh. you want to speculate. A, 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 more con- you can... a country that doesn't have the population of California, by the way. Go on. Yeah. Do you want to guess? No, not viewership. Do you want to guess where? What number it charted? Uh, what's the, how big is the chart? Uh, let's say uh, top 30. Let's say top 30. 30. Uh, 29. Mola? I, I, <laughs> I feel like I have absolutely no clues. I'm just like... Uh, one more than that, thirty. No, Gary said thirty. Extra oh. girls said twenty-nine. Thirty-one. Or is that I've already kept <laughs> okay, up? Fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> we'll come uh, with it. One of you got it right. Oh, and it was was Mahler? X-ray girl who got Whoa. it right. Oh. <laughs> it came twenty-nine. What came below it? Static. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's what came above it. Things like reruns of Scrubs came above it. Um, Scrubs is good. Uh, I think <laughs> reruns of Scrub at like four in the morning. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I couldn't believe. I, I was actually surprised because the show, the Robin Hood show, starts at ten o'clock at night. It came twenty ninth. Above it, there was Sportsnet One, CTV, <laughs> Sportsnet National Plus. CTV2 total. Uh, the shows were NHL pre- preseason show, Big Pine Theory, Blue Jay Central, CTV Evening News, Children Ruin Everything, Ghosts <laughs> Encore, another Big Pine episode, The Price is Right, Le Canada. Canada Euthanasia? This is, all, this, is all, this is all above it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it, I think I think it's hey, the, top uh, the number one 29th. show. The number one show of the week: Parliament giving a standing o- standing ovation to a literal oh. Nazi. Yeah. Well done. Well, in all fairness, he does that on a regular basis when he goes to a WEF meeting. Oh, this is true. Oh no! Uh, Wait, is this true? Did the true. IGN oh. give Loki season two a five? Wait. What? They know there's a number other than seven. I didn't know. They, <laughs> yeah, I honestly didn't know the reviews could go that low. Maybe I'm mistaken. Do they do TV shows? No, no, I'm looking. Five? I'm looking now. I'm looking now. I'm looking at five. Mediocre. Tom oh. Hiddleston's Loki is back for more multiverse shenanigans, but the absence of director Kate Heron. Fuck off. Seems to have sapped the willy wily fun from this Disney Plus spinoff. And she pissed off because she uh, realized that she was, well, <laughs> she got in a fight. With, like, uh, you notice that there's not a lot of returning creatives to Marvel because their experience is so shit. Uh, wasn't she the, one of the ones who said I wasn't allowed to do what I wanted to do, basically? She was one of them, yeah. yeah uh, five out of ten IGN. This is going to suck. It's, it kind of feels like I the think... blooms off the rose, doesn't it? Yeah, what? yeah, it's, it's it's not just that it'll suck as much as usual. It's just it's not got the protections it used to have, I guess. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's people on YouTube trying, but at least the the access media, it, they are so desperate right now. They have to at least try to tell the truth. IGN has turned on fucking Ahsoka a little bit too. They should. It's uh, crap. Th- one of their takes on Twitter was actually pretty fucking good. It's like an unboxing video. They called Ahsoka an unboxing video. I'm like, that is that is actually a it's really not, good description. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, what when you, you start losing money and, well, I mean, there's blood in the water. Disney is the biggest loser of the year. 
strike or no strike. I think that's pretty obvious to say. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they're getting schooled by other things that have figured it out, you know? Like, it took a production. I mean, like, we got to see how things go. But, again, this is pretty phenomenal news. Tomorrow Studios, who made Cowboy Bebop a piece of shit that I couldn't get through fucking 10 minutes of, turned it around with one show. Like, admitted their mistake, went out there and listened to you guys, and made a better show. Like, that's the whole fucking point. Uh, for all those people who say they don't, they don't listen, they do. They do. Some just actually take it to heart because they want to make money, right? Uh, and they also don't want to fuck with Japan. Th there's a big difference. We'll fuck with Western properties all day and not give a shit about the fans, but oh, boy, I'm going to not fuck with the anime audience right now because they will crush you. They will fucking crush you. It's anything that's fucking selling in this country, yep. in your country. Oh, it's it, dude. <clears throat> Next time I go to Barnes & Noble, I'll show you. It's worse than it was the last time I was there where it was... 32 shelves that were that weren't just waist high shelves it was floor to about mm. six inches so about six foot so six to seven foot shelf right six foot five to seven foot shelf 32 of them filled with manga six shelves that came up to my waist or a little above filled with american comic uh graphic novels that were mostly faced out now faced out yeah. means they're not spined they have the faces out to, to make it look like it's more full than it actually is. Yeah. Most of the manga, and I mean 95% of it, was spined. Now, I'll show it to you. And, that, and that's in uh, in San Antonio. The manga haven known as San Antonio, Texas. Dude, comics are thriving. Comics are <clears throat> thriving. Never been better. Comics are thriving. All right, Muller, you got to go? I, well... No, I can hang around. Um, it's just that it'll start to overlap with something else that's premiering right now, but that's okay. Well, I'm we're, we're going to go like 10 more minutes. Yeah, no problem. Then I got to go. So, uh, N sensitive. Is that supposed to be one word though? Nia sensitive for $10? Maybe it is. Thanks, it depends thanks. if you shout. Thanks for me. your help, X ray girl. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Mahler, did you hear that Destiny hates House of the Dragon? Yo. <laughs> what, what is what, what a is, fucking surprise? What is, he has like really bad meat. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like asking what does Ben Shapiro think of One Piece? Like who gives a ben fuck? Ben Shapiro also yeah, did yeah, not yeah, like yeah. House of the Dragon by the way. Of course not, because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, neither of them. Exactly. As uh if I catch him on a street whatever, I'll 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 call about for it, but whatever. Did Destiny's fine. wife's it's... boyfriend like House of the Dragon? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said in his chat that you would actually kill him. No, Mueller doesn't give a fuck. Uh, Destiny <laughs> uh, has a lot of shit takes. You should jump on uh, this one before he forgets key plot points. Like, why bother? He's only seen. So, from what I saw, someone messaged me about this. Like he's only seen two episodes. It's hard to take someone seriously about the state of House of the Dragon as a show overall when you've only seen the first two, especially that show. You'll know what I mean if you've seen it. Like, it's hard for me to be like, oh, you have some like important takes about exactly how the writing goes. I wasn't even fond of the show after the first episode because I didn't understand like the scope of all of it yet. I didn't know where they were going with everything. So it's just like, yeah, sure, if you don't like it, fine. But I'm almost certain it's Destiny, so he's going to say that it's really bad. He's going to he's going to talk about. I'll check it out. Apparently, it's one of his new videos. But uh, unfortunate, because House of Dragons is one of the best shows we've had of recent years. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, that and One Piece have been the best two shows in a long time. Followed closely by Tulsa King, Reacher, Terminalist, which is fucking awesome. Uh, there are some good shows. Uh, but as far as genre, not many. House of the Dragon, one of the best. Can't wait for season two. Can't wait. Hell yeah. I'll be there, Gary, uh, on your stream. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. We'll be start we're do doing every one. We'll, we'll drag Ryan in, too. And uh, Jane Theory, she'll probably join us. I know she's in retirement, but she might join us for House of the Dragon. I, uh, mm -hmm. Hear that, Jane? <laughs> we miss you, Jane. I, we miss you, Jane. I we saw do. her. She was in the chat for the dump or for a uh, Winds of Winter stream on Sporking. I saw her in the chat. Yeah, she's still yeah, around. Yeah, I've seen her here and there. She's yeah, yeah. Uh, always fun. We love Jane. She was great on those streams, too. Uh, no, well, I can't wait for those streams. That'll be fun. Uh, Ministry of Wrong Think for nine ninety nine. What's the difference between superheroes in the U.S. and superheroes in Canada? 
the number of S's on their suits. Oi! Oh, hangry is angry for five dollars. Good morning, as I watched your Sunday afternoon tea show, tea show, and I am looking to get either the long Halloween or hush, but mm. I'm not sure which one. Uh, long Halloween. Get long Halloween, especially this month. Get long Halloween first. It's better than Hush. Hush is good. Long Halloween's better. Both by Jeff Loeb. Same writer. Same writer. Same Jeff writer. Loeb. Both. Jeff Loeb. Uh, but they're both phenomenal. Jeff Loeb. Jeff Hush Johns. Is phenomenal. Jeff Loeb. Jeff Johns. Great comic book writers. Seminal, great, all timer comic book writers who went into TV and did in entertainment in Hollywood and didn't do so good. Yeah, there's not a wrong answer. By the way, there's not a wrong answer. Whichever you pick, it's good. Long Halloween's better. Hush is good. Hush is. Hush I'm, go, I'm, re, I'm gonna just about to reread Long Halloween. Tonight. It's fucking fantastic. Uh, Carnage undone for nine ninety nine. Justice for Trevor Bauer. Hashtag Me Too. That four oh three deserves jail time. Oh, that the that bitch who got caught on camera. Like, obviously. Uh, that wasn't just alcohol, by the way. She was drinking a Bud Light, but that was a mix of pills and stuff, too. I've seen that before. I've seen that before. And, and it's also an alcoholic. Hopefully she gets help. But, yeah, falsely accusing people, um, you're a piece of shit, and you should go to jail for doing that. Should do. This is the only way that's going to prevent yep. stuff like that from happening is actual consequences. Uh, she but, then, but then we go back to that um, tweet that Gundam put out with a woman on the fucking hospital bed saying woman shocked to realize that her actions have consequences. Oh, the accountability? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. It was a Dodgers pitcher. As yeah. Much, as much as I don't like Dodgers pitchers, he doesn't deserve to be falsely accused. Just beaten. No one does. Severely no. in a game uh, by the Padres. Uh, Disneyland <laughs> in Florida was so desperate that they had to get boys to men to play a three-day concert tour over the weekend. My sister-in-law went three times. Isn't it now like men to old men? Isn't it like men to grandpas at this point? <laughs> men to gramps? <laughs> okay. Um, that is an act of desperation, and that would keep me further away from Disneyland. I didn't like Boys to Men when they came out. I thought that was shit, dog shit music. It, it's it's ushered in this dog shit music era that we have right now. That fucking boy band garbage. Oh, fuck. Dan Vash should probably Ugh. cover a Boys to Men song. Oh, he'd probably fucking hey. do well with it. He'd probably do well with it. The Grizzly. For $5, woke up to some great rumors. Apparently, the 40K show that Cavill is making is the infamous Eisenhorn trilogy, which focuses on the Holy Inquisition. Uh, ooh, ooh. That sounds cool. All I'm right. down. I am down. Inquisitions, yeah. Mm. Uh, that rumor going around of Nolan doing uh, Bond is the only rumor I actually want to come true. Yeah. I want it to happen. If, if he's allowed carte blanche. Mm-hmm. And if he if, and if he is, acts like Bond, don't do grounded Bond, do a Nolan Bond, but bring the fun back. I don't know if Nolan can do the fun. You know what? Matthew Vaughn should do a Bond movie too. Oh fuck yeah, yeah, fuck yes. That would be a fun Bond movie. I, the, that would that'd be a very the Pierce Pierce's Pierce's Brosnan's era. Uh, was so much fun. It was it was a mix. It was a good mix between Golden Eye is the sh Golden Eye is the sh shit. Man. That is it is yep. fucking tier. great movie. So like go yeah. go back to that tone, please. please yeah, that Golden Eye tone is mwah, so perfect good. balance. Perfect balance. I remember walking out of the theater and just like I was like, yeah, Bond is back, baby. Fucking oh, oh. fuck, I love Golden Eye so I much. It. I I actually have a Golden Eye. You know that you do. A I actually took out yeah. my own eye and replaced it with a bowl. <laughs> Did you replace your wow. Did you replace your brown eye with your golden eye? <laughs> <laughs> Had it bleached. <laughs> no. It went uh, from a brown eye to a golden eye. I need to watch it again. I haven't watched golden it in a while. Eye. Such a great fucking movie. I, I actually have it purchased on YouTube. Wow. Why? For some reason. I Commitment. Don't. As am I blocked on your YouTube channel? Why won't you let me send you super chats uh, for for more than a month? Been a member of your channel for over a year. Says Citizen Seven for ten dollars. Jeremy sent me a text. Citizen Seven. Jeremy sent me a text about this. I looked at the the blocked people on my channel. 
you're not there. You're not on that list. So I have no idea what's, what's going, going on. on. Cause you, I, I, and I went through it. I scoured through it twice. Okay. I scoured through the whole list twice. You're not on there. You so might, I, I don't know what it is. You might have to refresh your payment settings. Uh, there might be a mistake with your card, something like that. Your card might've blocked it. Check that out too. That, that does happen. But, uh, it's happened to me. It, like, so I don't know for any reason why you should be, but you're not on the list. Yep. So going to see Patrick Stewart in Philly with my brother, pray for me. If I survive, he, he doesn't go full Mark Campbell. What's he doing? Is he doing his one man show? What, what are you going to go see him do? Complain. Uh, Cause if he does like his one man show, the Christmas Carol, it's fucking brilliant. I've seen it. Ooh. I've seen it like four times back in the, back in the day though, like 20 years ago. It's fucking so Have you seen good. him, the Christmas Carol with him in as Ebenezer Scrooge? Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, there, there's a, on Audible, and you can buy a physical media, you can buy a disc of his one-man show of uh, A Christmas Carol, and it's fucking great. Uh, Big Raj, for five Canadian pesos, I recently picked up Mike Barron's Dark Horse adaptation of the OG Thrawn trilogy. You guys should have him on. I hear he's working for Ripa now. Yeah, he is working for Ripa now. Mike mm. Barron? Yeah, maybe we'll have the like the Ripa team on sometime. Maybe we should do like a team show or something, something, something like that. I'm gonna be on Ripa tomorrow. Are you? Hey. I'm gonna be on next week, I think. Uh, Nerd Erotic Nooner tomorrow with uh, Comic Book Girl 19. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, very excited about that. Uh, the Iron Mega for ten dollars, Gary. If you like Primal, you should uh, check out Saria. Okay. I like Primal. I do. Tartakovsky's red. Pender666 for $10. I think red is for bad guys. Blue is for dueling focused Jedi. Green is for force user Jedis, like when Luke rebuilt the saber between five and six. And uh, purple, because you're a fucking Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you are a Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> uh, Gary's beard crabs. Hey, listen. Oh, It's seasonal. Ooh. Okay, oh. They're not around right now. <laughs> Uh, I have a feeling uh, we will get a Gary meth stream before we get uh, the top five Doctor Who. <laughs> you probably oh, no. will. You probably will. No, you're getting top five Doctor Who during the 60th anniversary. During the 60th anniversary. And I'm I'm very close to re to starting my rewatch again, which I could absolutely change my top five, by the way. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll see. We will see. Uh, Angry Yeti TV for two dollars. My birthday is a day after Mahler's. Oh, happy birthday! Happy birthday, <laughs> Ministry of Wrong Thing for nine ninety nine. Suggesting the dark side isn't inherently evil when every Sith plan involves galactic fl slavery and genocide. Yikes! Well, I mean, your idea of sla slavery is, uh, you know, servitude uh, to the entitled elites of Hollywood who treat their assistants, many of whom were not paid back in the day. I can't say back in the day, just a few years ago. You had interns. Interns didn't get paid. And a lot of people still don't get paid for exposure. That's the servitude, and they're treated like shit, and they're tossed away uh, by shit bags like former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hedlund, who will do or say anything to get so the primary a job. Um, difference between the dark and light is light is like knowledge, defense, and spirituality and stuff, and then the dark side is like using your emotions to fuel power. So, like, not necessarily good or evil for either, but the they trend towards particular directions. I thought Star Wars is good and evil, and we start traveling down paths that it's not good and evil, and shades of great. Then it stops being Star Wars. They'll fucking read a song of ice and fire then. Well, I mean, uh, as far as I know, it's just about execution. They fucked it up so many times. Like, it's it's hard to take it seriously at all. And especially when you hear comments like, there was no real good or bad people in the OT. It's like, what? Oh, <laughs> Palpatine is like one of the most evil characters in all of everything. So, yeah, you know, like, I'm willing to accept that there's nuances to the force or whatever, but I feel like they're not very good at executing yeah. it at all. In the movies, not fucking books, not comic books, not EU, in the live action movies, which are the true canon why is Palpatine evil? Because he's a big old wombus. Because we don't fucking know. He's don't. just evil. He's just an evil, evil guy. Yep. 
Because uh, it's about good versus evil. Mm -hmm. A theme played? that is is <laughs> the grizzly. Thousands of years of history. Good versus evil. It's yeah. it's thematically a very easy concept for everyone. You, to you got uh, ba Balin, fuck Ray Stevenson. What's his name again? Balin. Balin. Balin God, Skull. I just watched the fucking show and I Balin. Oh, Balin Skull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say I want to say Balin Targaryen for some reason, but he's a black pillar. <laughs> he's a black pillar. He's black pilled. Yeah, he's like you know what? The Republic was shit. The Empire was shit, and everything's shit. <laughs> like, I'm gonna go off in my little hole. I'm gonna go my existential nihilist hole and then tear everything down and rebuild it. Yay! Uh, I wonder if he dies this episode. Don't know. Yeah, if he doesn't die, then who do you recast him with? I've seen a couple suggestions. Nobody. Some that are like never gonna happen. Then some that I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Like I saw someone say fucking Mel Gibson. Was, why would they ever let him <laughs> do that? But the thing is, he could probably pull it off. He'd be. He could pull it I off. Don't... I don't think Mel Gibson's going to be getting any offers from Disney. No, I don't think so either. Um, someone said Jared Butler. I was like, hmm. No, who's the guy who played Garp in uh, One Piece? What was his name? Oh, fuck yeah, he'd be cool. He'd be good. Um, um, I think Shin is going to kill him. We'll see. That's the theory. She's going to be kill him and be good and uh, scissor with flick my Sabine. <laughs> flick my Sabine. <laughs> Carl Urban, that's the take, maybe. Carl Urban. I don't want him anywhere near a Disney property again. Yeah, that's the thing. Fuck any of these answers, actually. Let's just cast Danny DeVito. It'd be funny. Yeah. Ned of the Veil vale for $20 is not <laughs> I'd watch the shit out of that. I would, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ned of the Veil vale for 20 Canadian pesos. Not sure if you guys have seen this, but Matthew Vaughn is doing a spy film with Henry Cavill called Argyle. Argyle. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's just not going to be what you think it is. Like, Henry Cavill is a character of a book in a story. And you're kind of... But he's in it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to check it out because it's Matthew Vaughn. I like Matthew Vaughn. He's fun. But I think it's going to be more about the author of the book. But uh, if somebody kind of spun it like Romancing the Stone, if it's kind of like that, then eh, I like it. I like oh, Romancing the Stone. the Stone is fucking awesome. It's such a good movie. Uh, the Grizzly for $10. The Hoas Harris. The Ho Hoas Harris. Horus. 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 Sorry. Heresy. <laughs> okay. She spelled it the Hoas Heresy. <laughs> the Hoas. <laughs> The hoist heresy, yeah, baby. No, no, that that's you okay. bring them hoes later. Here. Like when when time has passed, when Kathleen Kennedy and her women have ruined Star Wars, we can call it the hoist heresy. With that's hey. a uh, is Hoist a prequel. Wars? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, the the Horus heresy is a prequel to Warhammer and completely dismantled your assertions about prequels. Warhammer, well, okay, no. Uh, the Horus Heresy is some of the best storytelling and writing Warhammer has to offer. Warhammer plucks a lot from other places, by the way. Michael, I also Markov. feel like they didn't listen to you or the quote. It's yeah. not like you ruled out good writing can exist in prequels. He's not insane. He's just saying that inherent within the creation of prequels is a sense that you're telling what came before instead of what is or something. It's like the I understand what, what what's the point of the quote. I do, I, uh, or rather, the point you were trying to make. Um, if you had everything you wanted to do about your story planned out from the beginning, you probably don't plan for prequels. Mm. That's just how that works. They're, they're, they're usually something we go, oh, fuck, actually, I wouldn't mind doing this here. And it's just like an awkward sort of execution. But yeah, you can make them amazing. They could even be better than the thing they're the prequel to, maybe. Sure, maybe. Yeah, sure. Once in a while. But yeah, most of the time, while. they're inherently tragedies. And as Mark Millar pointed out, uh, you know what happens. Even with, like, Ahsoka's a prequel. It's a prequel to shit, but it's a prequel <laughs> to the Disney trilogy. We know Thrawn isn't around, so he gets defeated. Uh, and the yeah. uh, somehow the Emperor comes back. <laughs> so, yeah, like, the show has the sword of Damocles over it, and it's already shit as it is. It's like the idea that this thing is heading to shit when it's already shit. It's great. <laughs> There's no Mando, there's no Baby Yoda, there's no Ahsoka in the Disney trilogy. They're all gone somehow. Uh, the Happy Plague... I think uh, KOTOR is, is well regarded. That's obviously set a long, long time before the original trilogy. But I think, I think uh, particularly with Star Wars, we're bogged down in an, in an era that 
nobody fucking gives a shit about because we now have the sequel trilogy and we know where everything's going so why care about anything that's going on with the Mandalorian or Ahsoka? We know they're going to fucking destroy Luke. We know they're going to destroy Han. Uh, and Filoni's trying to insert Ahsoka as the most popular, the most, not popular, the most important character within Star Wars. And she wasn't in six of the fucking films. And it makes no sense that she wasn't, she wasn't in those films based off what Filoni's trying to do. He, she should have been killed off at the end of Rebels, uh, when she went up against Vader, that's where her story should have ended. It would have been a fine story to end there. Uh, but we, we're just bogged down in, in, in just minutia shit right now, with, with particularly with Star Wars and all the crap that they're putting out, and we all know where it leads. It leads to the destruction of everything that everybody loves. All right. And we get to see the last episode tonight because it's Tano Tuesday. Woo! Uh, Tomato Truck has donated seventeen seventy six, quoting oh, no. quoting Leslie Headland or uh, somebody asking Leslie Headland, "Why did you work for Harvey Weinstein?" Leslie Headland. Well, when I was a young queer girl, <laughs> uh, NJ Scoundrel for ten dollars says cast Scott Eastwood in a Dirty Harry sequel. Going after BLM and Antifa in San Francisco, and you would have a license to print money. You can take all of mine. Uh, Benson DeVito for nine ninety nine. Kanan and Hera are just are just Dave Filoni stealing the repurposed Kyle Katarn and Mira from Dark Forces video games and Star Wars Jedi Knights game ideas in the EU. Yes, yes. And there's been a a, a little a little guy named Ryan Ken Kennel, our little guy, has been saying this shit for years. <laughs> Uh, run, it's Gazira for $10, says, how about <laughs> Thrawn from the books used cloak asteroids against Coruscant in the most populated planet in the galaxy to inspire fear? Think we'll get that? I don't. They did something very similar in the Expanse. They didn't use, well, they didn't use asteroids. They flung um, uh, titanium, like, giant bullets that acted as asteroids that were cloaked at Earth to destroy it, uh, the the belters. They just slingshotted that shit down to Earth and caused just basic cataclysm and uh, wiped out the Earth. Pretty crazy. Bummer. Yeah. Well, some people survived. It, it recovered after years Well, years. you know, not everyone died. But not everybody died. <laughs> not everybody died. Uh, you, know, you know what? One of the be better actors, unless it's miscast on IMDb, but the actor playing Enoch, you know, the guy with the stormtrooper with the face? Uh, it's supposed yeah. to be Wes Chatham, Amos from The Expanse, and he's under a fucking mask, not doing anything. Yeah, you wouldn't, and he's got a fucking filtered voice. You don't even, yeah, <laughs> like, like what a waste. Uh, hey guys, have you come across the video by Joe Jacqueline titled Luke? Did I ever tell you about Ahsoka Tano? Oh, yeah, we played it. Uh, I'm surprised <laughs> yeah. the video hasn't been taken down on YouTube. We've played it before the show many times. Many it's times. A funny video. It's funny video. Uh, mm. I hate how Disney treats life. Those stormtroopers were at least 16-year-old loyal veterans of Thon, the elite of the elite, his constant companions. He helped survive. Their loss would be a tragedy. This is constrained uh, anar anachronism. Constrained anachronism. You're trying to hurt me right now with these words. Frosty12 for $9.99. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am glad to be a part of the fellowship. It is not despair, for despair is the only is only for those who see the end beyond all doubt. We do not. Tolkien, we are united. Absolutely correct. Uh, Winter Wolf, CR7 for $10. Hail, I'm also re-watching Buffy. Just finished season three, episode one last night, and I was wondering, are any of you Buffy Angel, are the Buffy and Angel comics good? I remember reading after the fall of volume one, while back and enjoying it. Uh, the ones that came out during Buffy and Angel that were printed by Dark House, the ones that I've been bagging and boarding, these are good. These are good. Uh, Mahler doesn't like anything afterwards. <laughs> no. I think it's. I think after the fall is fine. I think it's I've better. Heard, I've heard a lot of fans like after the fall, but I won't be able. I can't. I can't deal with it. After the, the fall, continuity pretty good. stops at the end of uh, Not Fade Away. So. So we're into season four. So we're going back. I use your list. We're going back and forth. And mm -hmm. uh, oh, fuck, I was dying when Spike goes to Angel. 
By the way, yeah. Angel, I haven't seen Angel in years, man. It's fucking Batman. It's great. I love the show. I love Angel, yeah. Uh, I fucking love it. But when Spike is watching uh, Angel after he saved the girl and he's doing the conversation between the two. Yeah. Oh, my funny fucking fun. God. It's funny. He's like, oh, I had a gay nephew one time, too. Moo. It's so Don't, don't touch the hair. Don't touch, don't the, touch hair. the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that clip up on Twitter. It's so fucking funny. We were rolling. Uh, yeah, God. Spike said treasure wherever he goes, and they do that. They were like, we got to make him a big character. This Dude, we can do. Angel gets tortured by a child molesting vampire. Yep. Uh, it's fucking crazy. And then he fucks him up in the daylight. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Weston four eighty seven five dollars for five dollars. Hey Gary Muller, you guys want to rehash the old homeschooling debate? I love you, massives. Also, hi rags. Oh wait, I homeschooling mean, as, debate. Yeah, hi as. Did we have a homeschooling debate? I am down with homeschooling. Absolutely. I've fucking never dead. had a home. I've never had a comment on homeschooling. <laughs> um, you you have to now because the the schools are indoctrination centers for the most part. I found a great school, uh, near near my home. It's a, and it's a, it's a Christian school. It's fucking fantastic. My kid learned more in, the, in his last two years than he did since he left elementary school. And he's doing freaking great. So, uh, yeah, public schools are a fucking waste of time. Uh, some people have to use them because, you know, school's expensive. But uh, our private school is like 1000 bucks a month. 1000 bucks a month. So that's not like, it's still a lot to somebody, okay? And it's, but it's it's not like, the tuition you would see like 20, 25,000, 30,000 for private schools. Like that's a lot. It's a, lot. a year, a year. <laughs> Slipping down as. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, what are you, Dad. What are you doing? Nothing, Dad. What are you oh doing? Nothing, Dad. What Nothing. are you doing? Nothing. Also, Gary, we're like half an hour over. Okay, let's go. <laughs> we got to go. What's this fucking say? <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Okay, we got to we gotta end it there. We got to go. We're like way half hour over. I have an Ahsoka video to do. As what do you got coming up? Uh, tomorrow, 7.30 UK time, which I think is 1.30 uh, central time. Uh, I will be on uh, Eric July's channel. I'll be on uh, Ripper, Young Ripper's channel. Uh, having a chat with Eric about comics and other stuff. Uh, so join me then. And Friday, Friday Night Tights, Disproves the Guest. Uh, tomorrow also should have my Ahsoka final episode review up before the stream. Thursday should have the Robin Hood episode <laughs> two <laughs> review. Lovely. Ah! And then, uh, and then we'll see. Uh, but I might actually stream after this. I might do some more Sunken Land uh, for a bit Ooh. after this. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, Mahler, what do you got going? You got something premiering right now, right? Yes. Oh, am I allowed to link something? Yes, eh. of course. Ah. Whatever you want. It is, it's in the thingy chat. Um, All right, I'll put it so, I'll put it in there. Well, yeah. So on Mula, we're currently premiering our coverage of five and six of Ahsoka's episodes. They're pretty highly edited. They're all reaction-based and zooms and references and jokes and stuff. And then, of course, we're covering the, the famous Anakin episode. And the one that came after it, which is took us a bit longer because, of course, I made the video on it first. Um, but this is our sort of live coverage of it. It's fun. If you want to jump over there after this stream, wouldn't would, would, you know, it could be a bit of fun. It's just everybody hanging out while watching everybody suffer. That's what everyone likes to do on the internet. It's fucking hilarious. Go watch it. I, I, if I didn't have work to do, I'd run over there and watch it. I might watch a little bit while I'm taking my break. You got to see Anakin Vader. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I have to I have to watch it now. Um <laughs> X-ray girl, what you got coming up? Uh tonight we have Epic Mike on Dadcast at 8 p.m. Eastern on Poor Choices. So hop on over there if you want to see uh some good dads in the fellowship. And then um tomorrow Rebecca Bear at 9 p.m. on that channel as well. So yeah. Cool. I play games. Tomorrow, comic book girl 19. On the Nooner with Chris Gore. Uh, I'm taking about a half an hour break, and then I'm going to start on my final Ahsoka review, which will cover episodes, what, three to to tonight. So I'm just trying to get a head start. And uh, I'm going to read one more super chat before we go. John Goats, for $20 on the stream, I said, Gary, if you want some good old-fashioned heroism, 
And since you are a weeb now, I kind of am, you should check out My Hero Academia sometime for the best examples of character development through action. So it could be a nice uh, cleanser for Ahsoka, filler, boring action slop. Oh. I'd, be, I'd be happy to. I, I, uh, but um, I finished a review that's, I, I think my, my Ahsoka review will probably come out before it. So the plan is Ahsoka to come out Wednesday or Thursday, Loki to come out probably Saturday. Or Sunday, maybe Friday. I don't know. Sometime during the weekend, uh, and then I got, I, 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 sorry, I've got a correction to make after you finish. Okay, and then um, at some point, the my One Piece review is going to come out, which has been I've worked actually spent a lot of time working on it, <laughs> and uh, it was a pure joy. And I could have talked about it for three hours. Now I, I didn't. It's probably more like a half an hour long, but uh, that's long for me, Mahler. Don't laugh. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was such a pleasure, and it did its job. I'm now going to watch the anime and read the manga. It did its job, so uh, that's coming up. So we've all got to go. As what do you what do you got to say? Correction, right? I thought this was part of that lot that I bought for twenty for twenty dollars. No, no, it wasn't. This was actually sent to me by States Manuel, and he had a duplicate. And so he actually sent me this and he said, I want you to read it and uh, hopefully it might inspire you to get more. So this, this is going to be staying with me in my collection. Uh, so States Manuel, thank you. Uh, he found the, he found the timestamp and everything. So that collection that I thought it was in was actually uh, just the Superman, the Superboy, the Lois Lane, the Batman and the detective coins, which is still a good lot to get. But uh that was the story, the actual story behind the uh, Fantastic Four Thirteen. Mm. Aaron, so that will be, I, I might get get it graded though, and still just keep it in collection. Oh, shit. Aaron, thank you for the comics. You sent me a big old stack of freaking awesome. There's a Kelly Jones cover right there. Boop -boop -boop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for never missing an episode of Real BBC. We appreciate you. And now we are going to go. Everyone have a great day. Thanks to the Mod Rodics. Thanks to everyone in the Super Chat donation. You help keep the lights on. You will, The rest will be read in a square up that will come out uh, sometime this week. And we will see you on Az's channel after three weeks in a row on mine. We're now yeah. caught up. <laughs> We're on Az's channel next week. Ciao, everyone. Bye. 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 Oh, that's that's me. That's that's my cue. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's my cue. Yeah, damn I'm, boomer. I'm a boomer. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm a boomer, baby. baby. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. No, god dang it! I hit the wrong one again. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Ah.